and Kentucky will receive the football. Shanklin back to receive. You see him back there, number 23 for Kentucky. But this series has really been dominated by the Tennessee Volunteers. They have won the last 15 in this meeting. It's been a very difficult year for Hal Mummy. I think maybe expectations got uh, a little bit out of hand early on. This was a team that was going to be rebuilding anyway. Yeah. And I think uh, with Jared Lorenzen and this passing attack, people maybe thought this team was going to do a little bit better than than they have in the past but uh, nonetheless a disappointing season for Kentucky to this point not so disappointing for this man despite a six and three record right now after a two and three start Philip Fulmer's club has won four straight football games and they've done so quite convincingly a big drive against South Carolina to win it late and of course Arkansas last week yeah, and couldn't you tell yesterday when we were in the uh, talk with Philip Fulmer how much pride he takes in this town and we are about set Alex Walls kicking off for the Vols. It goes back to Shanklin. It's a little reverse. Ooh. It does not go anywhere. Inside the 10, it's Ernest Sims finally brought down. And Kentucky will take over deep in their own territory. And here's the Wildcat offense today. True freshman Chad Scott averaging almost five yards per carry. Lightning quick back. Derek Smith, a big tight end, a big target. We'll see a lot of him today. Offensive line. These guys have played all right. They've only uh, given up 16 sacks this season. That is quite impressive. And there is Jared Lorenzen. All six foot four, 280 pounds. The 19 interceptions are a number he would like to improve on. But still, nonetheless, this team has moved the football up and down the field all season long, leading the conference in total offense. Lorenzen under pressure. Down he goes at the 13 yard line. Tennessee's defense looks like this. D'Angelo Lloyd, John Henderson, Edward Kendrick, Will Overstreet, the front four, have been awesome, to say the least, this year. In the middle, Westmoreland and Session. Sessions, Anthony Sessions and Westmoreland, both playing in their final home game. In the secondary, Andre Lott has played corner. They moved him to free safety. Now he's at the strong safety, and he's just now coming into his own. Second down and about seven. Handoff, nothing going John wow. Henderson Chad Scott might have lost a yard did anybody touch Henderson he just came off the line number 98 was in the backfield and he almost took the handoff from Jared Lorenzen you've got to pay a lot of attention to big John Henderson today that's the eighth tackle for loss on the season for John Henderson he leads the Southeastern Conference down lineman in tackles with 60 Five wide outs in the game on a third down and seven. Pass dropped over the middle. Ernest Sims. Well, the ball was a little bit behind Sims, but you can't drop passes when you're in an offense that really needs to get moving. And you put so much pressure on your defense, you have got to start off moving those chains. Tennessee should get great field position, perhaps at midfield or better. Taking game has been a problem for Kentucky this year. Glenn Pakulak has been punting the last couple of games. He takes over that duty. Seth Hansen had been doing double duty for Kentucky. Eric Parker back to receive the punt. Eric Parker, a guy that uh, has big play capability written all over him. High spiral. Parker fields it at his 40. Slips but keeps his feet. Parker still on his feet. Trying to get to the outside. Picks up a block. Oh, he's got a wall. Parker tackled at the 34 of Kentucky by the punter Bakulak. A 26-yard return. And in the opening kick last week, it was Parker who helped set Tennessee up for their first touchdown of the game. Well, three missed tackles. You just cannot miss tackles. You got to square up. You got to keep him in the hole. You see, he almost goes down. There's one missed tackle. Now, right in there, there's another missed tackle. You just can't do that. Not with somebody with this talent. Now you got to get out there. They are lucky that the punter came over there and made the tackle, or else he's down the sideline. First and 10 now for the Volunteers inside the 35. A little quick hitter to the outside, Cedric Wilson. Good coverage defensively by Tennessee. And here's a look at the ball's offense today. In the backfield, Travis Henry needs 135 rushing yards to become the all-time leading rusher at Tennessee. And when you consider the company that has played oh tailback in here, wow. my goodness. 
Up front, this is how they'll look. Coleman, Herrera, Wells, Champion, and the true freshman, Michael Munoz. And another true freshman, Casey Clawson, takes the snaps. Looking to go 5-0 and as a starter. Look at that completion percentage. 63% on the season for Casey. There's a handoff. Travis Henry tries to break a tackle. Eric Kelly was hanging on for dear life. And here's the Wildcat defense that has been somewhat maligned this year. But this defensive front certainly has some uh, optimism in it with a couple of true freshmen playing and Robertson and Caudill. And the linebackers, Marlon McCree leads the team in tackles. Just a tremendous, hard-nosed, aggressive linebacker for Kentucky. And in the secondary, these guys uh, were supposed to be kind of the, the guy that they were counting on, the, the guys yeah. in the secondary to be counted on, but they've kind of been disappointing. But there's Travis Henry, just went over 1,000 yards for the season. Fumbled snap by Casey Clawson, falls on it, and that'll bring up third down. And or Dave, we mentioned the, I should say, second the, down, excuse, excuse me. me, yeah, right. The, I would mention the cold weather, and it's going to be interesting to see what Casey Clawson does with that. What people talk about with cold weather is the texture of the ball changes. It gets a little slicker. So when the ball's out here, you see, now that wasn't a real good snap, but look, now you got to find a handle on it. We'll see if that affects him. The grip is a little bit different. The delivery is a little bit different. And of course, Scott Wells, 64. He's the center, just that freshman's. Fred Weary yeah. is, uh, was supposed to be their starter, an All-American type player. He goes down and hadn't played all season. And Scott Wells has really picked up the slack in the middle of that offensive line. Will Bartholomew makes the catch. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up third down. Matt Leo picks up the tackle, the senior out of Miami, Florida, for the Kentucky Wildcats. It was interesting last week, Will Bartholomew got his first carry this year. Yeah. <laughs> There's Mike Major, the defensive coordinator, at least for one more Saturday. Yeah, that's a tough position to be in. Uh, just a story career, just, uh, I mean, a friend of Hal Mummies for years and years and years. They coached all the way from high school, and they used to talk about eating beans and rice yeah. together. They go all the way back to 1977 Moody High School in Texas. That's how far back. These guys have spent a lot of time talking football. And they can they will continue to. His major will be director of football operations. Boston over the middle has his man. Inside the five, it's Cedric Wilson. That'll bring up first and goal, Willie Gary, on the coverage, a gain of 18. Boy, great pass protection in the middle. They just kind of fanned everybody outside. Clawson is looking downfield like he's just playing seven on seven. Look at that. Nobody around him. Just stand back there, look, find your man. That's like seven on seven. You've got to get pressure on Casey Clawson or he's going to eat you up. 63% completion rate this year. I mean, that is sensational. The only downside, really, is 14 sacks for Casey. There's the handoff. Touchdown, Volunteers. It's Travis Henry from four yards out. Number seven for Travis. And all it was was just a power play. Big man on big man up front. They went behind Munoz. The freshman, number 77, right to the left of your screen. Look at him driving off the ball right there. Just great penetration. Good block up there by Will Bartholomew, the fullback. He gets a lot of opportunities. Alex Walls to attempt the point after. 62 of 63 in his career in that department. It is up and good. Tennessee has scored at least 56 points in the last four meetings of this series. Kentucky will have to try to slow them down. They lead by seven. Travis Henry takes it in as Tennessee leads Kentucky seven to nothing. 10-11 to go in the first quarter. And Tennessee has been dominating, dominating their opponents in the first quarter. Of course, 35 points last week, Dave, will <laughs> yeah, help that number. That sure does. But uh, now you start wondering, who in the world scored 13 points on them? A lot of games. Jared Lorenzen keeping that left hand warm as he's about to take the field after Tennessee kicks off. It is a cold day. Well, you know so bad about it. It's kind of wet cold. It's damp out here. Down to the two yard line. Shanklin takes it. Kendrick Shanklin out across the 20. Shanklin across the 30 to the 36 yard line where he's run out of bounds. It was a return of 33 yards. Alex Walls, the kicker, had to run him out of bounds. Good return for Kendrick. Last possession, Kentucky started inside their own 10 before they had to punt it away. 
And Dave, you get the feeling when you look at Kentucky, they've got a, they've got, it's almost like a punching game, a sparring game. They've got to punch back. They cannot get two or three touchdowns behind. Jared Lorenzen's got to take them down. They've got to keep the pressure off their defense. They've got to score on offense. The bad news for Kentucky is Tennessee over the last five games giving up just over 16 points a game. A couple of tight ends in the game. Setback is Scott. He gets the carry. The quick, true freshman stopped by Will Overstreet and a handful of other volunteer defensive players. Yeah, you talk about a handful. Boy, there's a there's a handful, and they're led up front by Big John Henderson. Watch him in here. Two people, you don't drive him off the ball. He just kind of sheds them. There's nowhere to go. You don't see any hole. There's no opening, so to speak. He gets a lot of help from the backside. You saw that time Overstreet, number 90, come in there. From two tight ends, we go to a four-wide receiver set. Pass batted down. Read extremely well by D'Angelo Lloyd, the senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, what uh, Kentucky was hoping that time, the play fake, they were hoping would take Lloyd, number 99, inside. Little play fake, he doesn't fall for it. You see right there, bang. Right there, when Lorenzo turns around, he's got number 99, he's looking up his nostrils. There's no place to throw. Again, you see, no, the play fake does not hold him. There's just nowhere to go. Third down and nine. Last week, Arkansas was 0 for 9 on third down conversions against Tennessee. Quick hitter across the middle, going to be shy of the first down. That went to Jimmy Robinson, but it picks up about eight on the play. Well, you almost get the feeling, I mean, I know it's early in the game, but you almost get the feeling that Kentucky realizes that they might have to go for it in these yeah, situations. Absolutely. What do you got to lose? Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's the end of the season. You haven't, you've been, you've had disappointments. Hey. Just go for it. Why not? Well, you... they're 13 of 26 on fourth down attempts this year. Yeah. Here comes the Neyland Stadium crowd on fourth down and two. Now, do you run it? That's tough against this Tennessee front. I think you have to pass it. Lorenzen had an eye on the play clock and had to call a timeout. Heads up play by Jared Lorenzen. We'll take a timeout as well. Tennessee leads it seven to nothing. Back for the fourth down conversion after a word from your local stations. Fourth down and two for the Wildcats from their own 43 yard line. Oh, somebody jumped off sides. Omar Smith popped up. Oh, boy, that's a tough one. Look at how mummy. He's upset. It was fourth down, two yards to go. Now it's fourth and seven. You make the decision. You don't. Uh, you don't do the play in this situation. That just didn't work out. He had to take a timeout because the play clock was running down. Then you get your play set, and now you got an offensive lineman popping up, and uh, now you got to punt it away. But at least Tennessee won't have the kind of field position, barring a big return, like they did the first time. Well, you know, that two yard halo that you have to give the receiver, that really gives the receiver an advantage. You got to get down, you got to square up on him, don't let him run. Eric Parker had a big return moments ago, but it's Rashad Baker back there to return this punt. He won't have an opportunity to do it as Kentucky downs it at the 35. We mentioned it was a cool day in Knoxville. Let's go down and check in with Charles, who has more on this weather. Charles, what's up? Hey guys, it's 32 degrees at kickoff. It's calm with the wind, but it's still 32 <laughs> degrees at kickoff. And I know you guys are enjoying being in the booth. I'm next to the space heater here, all right? Oh, I'm next boy. to the one that blows out the hot air. And there's a police officer near the Kentucky bench who told me, get away from it. That's for the players. <laughs> so I have to move, guys. At 32 degrees, cold weather will be a factor in this game. Hey, he must have been football players going, because you are a player, Charles. Right. Let's get that straight. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be in <laughs> Kentucky or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Handoff to Henry. Hey, play zone, guys. Tackled play after zone. a gain of about two by Willie Gary. His third tackle already for Willie Gary. But Travis Henry closing in on the all-time Tennessee rushing record. James Stewart has been holding down that fort for yeah. quite some time, but that may go down today. If not, Tennessee takes on Vanderbilt. So barring an injury, Philip Fulmer will see a guy that he thinks 
deserves some of this recognition after playing behind a, a guy like Jamal Lewis for exactly. a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, he played in the shadows of Jamal Lewis for a year, for a couple of years. He never got a chance. When you look at his game starts, he doesn't have a whole bunch. Henry takes it to the 45, close to the first down, probably has it. Well, you've got to be able to shed blocks, and Henry just explodes through there. Again, just power. It's going to go right in there. Watch it. Bang. Good block in there. Good lead by the off guard. Now, Michael Munoz is number 77. Watch this. Lock up. Now, if you're a defender, you got to get rid of him. You can't get rid of him. See, he's up, standing up straight. Got those claws on him, too. Of course, I remember that fella right there on the right. <laughs> Anthony Munoz, his wife, Dee Dee. Michelle will be coming to Tennessee next year to play basketball. A little misread from Casey and his receiver looking for Eric Locke, but Eric cut the route off. So uh, the Tennessee fans will be seeing a lot of the Munoz family. Yeah. I used to see a lot of Anthony Munoz. He played right next to Max Montoya. And I used to tell last week I was saying, oh, man, I just tore him up. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I didn't play over Anthony. I played, <laughs> I played over Max Montoya. And tear him up, that wasn't a good average. That wasn't a good adjective to use. Great guy. Just a marvelous. Hall of Famer. Well, his son Michael, they say, uh, talking to Coach Fulmer, that uh, basically he'll add some strength, and that'll really, some lower body yeah. strength to really make him more effective next season. Here's a handoff to Henry. The Kentucky oh, defense oh. can't hang on. Henry still on his feet, finally run out of bounds. First down, Tennessee. How about the strength from Travis Henry? How about four missed tackles? Your middle linebacker starts off, and he misses them. That's number 59. Then you come with Marlon McCree. Misses him here. This is the first one right in there. Now watch this. There's McCree. He's going to let go. Now up comes uh, Willie Gary, 27. He misses him. And then finally, Derek Tatum brings him down. But watch this roll again. Bang, he just kind of shed them, just pushing them off. An incredible run. A gain of 15. Henry, this time he can't shake the tackle of McCree. Marlon, a... Uh, fiery competitor oh. and you know that that last play kind of chapped oh. his backside let's check in with charles again charles hey guys last week when dave rowe was here for the arkansas game travis henry put on a show and ran for 214 yards a career high so coach phil fulmer awarded him a game ball travis henry being a smart running back awarded that game ball to his offensive line a class move by a class individual Travis Henry now 95 yards shy of the all-time rushing record. And that was a very nice act from a senior. Clawson slides out of the pocket. A little sidearm pass caught by his receiver down at the 18-yard line. It's Eric Parker. That was a gain of 21. And Dave, when you talk about the maturity of a quarterback, that's exactly what Casey Clawson did that time. Oh, we have an injury there. Looks like Parker might yeah. have twisted an ankle or something coming down when he caught that football. But you talk about the maturity of a quarterback. That time, Clawson, he sees the pressure from his outside. He steps up in front of it. And remember, he's just a freshman. He sees the pressure coming from his, his left side. Now watch, just step up in front of it. Now, square the shoulders and look at the arm. We talked about the strong arm. It's almost like it's a side arm. Just a sling to him. Bang. The results are completion. Looked like he came down awkwardly on that knee, but first and 10 now for Tennessee. We'll get an update on Parker's situation in a moment. Clock ticking, under six minutes to go. Seventh play of this drive. Wide open, touchdown Tennessee. It's Dante Stallworth with a second touchdown grab of the season. Had to be a break in defensive coverage because nobody can get that wide open in 10 yards. To the outside, you'll see 21, Derek Tatum. He's got him first. But all of a sudden, he just kind of runs away. You see Tatum kind of pull up right there. I think he was counting on the safety. Patrick Wiggins, number 29, covering deep. Didn't get there in time. One after is up and good, and it's 14 to nothing, Tennessee. Casey Clausen has now thrown 11 touchdown passes this year. Meanwhile, Dante Stallworth, the big play man with a touchdown reception of his own. Back after this message from Alltel. Volunteer fans certainly happy with the start to this one. 14-0 Tennessee over Kentucky on a cold afternoon in Knoxville. Casey Clawson with 11 touchdown passes this year. Only three interceptions. 
He's a guy that had some arm shoulder problems earlier in the year with some tendonitis that's kind of set him back a little bit, but he seems to be finding his groove now. Hendrick Shanklin at the goal line. Shanklin's got a little room, closes in a hurry out to the 25-yard line, a return of 25. Tara Holbrook from Wesley Chapel, Florida, is our grand prize winner in the sleep-in Team of the Century promotion on jpsports.com. She won seven free nights at any sleep-in. The sleep-in Team of the Century, as selected by the fans, is the 1958 national champion LSU Tigers with 28% of the vote. Close behind in second place is the 1979 national champion Alabama Crimson Tide, who garnered 26% of the vote. I think that's kind yeah, of a shocker. 58 LSU team. There were some good ones. You remember really the famous, came yeah, on that team? Exactly. The following year, I believe, he won the Heisman Trophy. Chad Scott gets a first down for Kentucky. Gain of 12 from freshman to freshman on that one. Well, I'll, I'll test your memory. Wasn't that the Chinese bandits back in 1958? Yes, it was, yeah, Dave, absolutely. bro. I like that. Pretty good, huh? Good I remember time. that midnight run of Billy Cannon. How about Paul Dietzel as the coach? See, in 1958, I was... Uh, you were three. No. <laughs> yeah. I was playing. <laughs> my, my folks were three in 1958. Whoa. Oh, God. <laughs> You're killing me. Get my, that knife out of me. It's cr Christmas season's coming up, so I'm expecting something <laughs> nice from Mom and Dad this year. Well, don't expect anything from me. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzen swings it to the outside. Across the 40, it goes to Derek Homer, the senior out of Fort Knox, Kentucky, run out of bounds by Eric Westmoreland. You know, and our traveling historian is actually our sideline man, Charles Davis. Charles, you have more on the on the bandits? Ooh. Yeah, you guys talk about Paul Dietz on the Chinese bandits. That was back during the time of a one platoon football. He had three teams, actually. He had a go team, which was his offensive unit. He had a white team, which was a defense, which was another's unit that you went both ways. And then he had the Chinese bandits. That was a specialty defensive unit. Three platoon football in a one platoon time. Uh -huh. Charles, Charles, Charles. You're not old enough to know that kind of stuff. I'll bet you one thing, none of them wore hats like Charles has on. No. <laughs> Nearly picked off at the 45 by Jabari Greer, the sensational true freshman out of Jackson, Tennessee. The pass was intended for Derek Smith. Boy, this is just good play. They really like Jabari Greer. They like his movement to the game. You see, there you see Lorenzen getting hit. But again, look at Greer. Just bang, he comes right up to the football. They want to get him in a lot of situations today. He's just a freshman, and he's in that nickel defense. There's Jabari. Great story. Brother paid his way for him to come to the Tennessee football camp and that's where Tennessee coaches first got a look at Jabari and they are just impressed with his ability in the secondary. Wants to play some wide receivers as a matter of fact. Here's a guy that's playing a little running back and picks up the first down. How about Jared Lorenzen who's had a nice year running the football. Had a big game the last time out did Lorenzen against Vanderbilt last week. And this is a heads up play by Lorenzen. Credit the offensive line. Watch the time he is sitting back there. He's just sitting back there looking downfield, drifts out this way, nobody in front of him. Then he sees that little red flag there on the sideline, just has to step ahead of it, pick up that first down. That's what Kentucky has to do. They have to move the chains. They've got to keep the pressure off their defense. Kentucky put up almost 600 yards of offense against Vanderbilt last year, but lost the game and scoring no points in the second half. You see the gun on Lorenzen. That's oh. another first down. He hits Quentin McCord, who's out of LaGrange, Georgia, a gain of 13. Boy, if you don't catch that ball, it's going to stick in you because that's what Lorenzen did. It was the blitz in the middle. Westmoreland, number 42. See him get picked off right there now. Step up, step up, and wham! Boy, he throws that ball in a rope. And big John Henderson getting blocked. How about how about number 71 there? That's Josh Parrish, the right guard, doing a pretty good job on John Henderson. The, first down and 10 for the Wildcats. Nice move from Derek Homer. He gets close to the 35. Kentucky's a team, when you look at the stats, you say to yourself, how can they only average 23 points a game, which is 10th in the league? They have 233 first downs. That blows away that the does. competition in the league. They're struggling inside the red zone. From 20 to 20, they're as good as they get. Oh, they are. Unbelievable, 20 to 20. But once you get in that red zone, last week, Dave, they had five times inside there. They came away with two field goals. 447 total yards per game, but only 23 points a game. Go figure. Second and eight now for Kentucky. Handoff up the middle. 
Scott down to the 20-yard line. First down, Kentucky. Boy, this is just a burst. They love Chad Scott. He's got that explosive speed. When he gets the football, he sees the hole. He doesn't dance into it. Bang, he just darts into it. Watch this. Right back over here. He's going to see the hole. See him just dart right on by. He's not looking. He's just darting through there. When you see that seam, you got to take it. Chad Scott out of Plant City, Florida. You see what Kentucky has done on this particular drive. Eight passes to five rushes. Lorenzen's had a mix of both runs and passes. It's First down and 10. They're just outside the red zone. That might be good news for Kentucky. Here's Sims. Gets met at the 15 and stood up by Andre Lott. Boy, and Andre Lott just grabbed on that shirt and wham, just threw him down. You have to love the play of Andre Lott to convert it from a corner, and that's a tough position to come from cornerback to go to safety. And John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, said to us, he said that really solidified our secondary when we brought Andre Lott in there. Andre feels most comfortable at corner. I talked to him yesterday, but he says, you know, he's starting to feel comfortable now with safety, but maybe at the next level, he'll be looked at as a corner. Second down and four for Kentucky. Little slant over the middle. With big hands. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. The second time today by D'Angelo Lloyd. Boy, and he gets those hands up. D'Angelo Lloyd, number 99, gets those big arms up. Right of your screen, there he is coming off the ball. Good head butt. Now you see your quarterback throwing. Look how high it is. It hit him right in the chest. He's a big man, 6'5", and when he gets up, dang, last week he got a chance to return a fumble and scored. What a thrill 30, for him. 34 yards for D'Angelo Lloyd, his first touchdown. But Lorenzen on this drive, 5 of 7 for 38 yards. Third down and four. Comes a blitz. Pressure on. Lorenzen goes down. A loss of 15 back to the 30. They've used this center blitz with Eric Westmoreland several times. Nobody touches him on the play. Just right up the gut. You see number 42. He's just going to pop right into your screen. And by the time Lorenzen sees him, there's just nowhere to go. That's uh, his third sack of the year. Well, they actually spot his forward progress at the 27-yard line. 41 sacks against a team that hasn't given up a lot of sacks. That's the 17th all season, and now they're going for it on fourth down, but a flag has just been dropped. Fourth and 16, and Coach Mummy's going for it. You know, I think what happened is Hal Mummy, they, they talked about the illegal substitution where they break the huddle with 12. They're talking about him. They're talking about it right now. Hal Mummy really upset. I think that what, what the call was that they broke the huddle, Dave, with 12 men in the huddle, and that's a deception thing. Hal Mummy very upset about it. Well, they'll go for it. What, the 4th and 16, 4th and 21? What's the difference? That's right. What the heck? Let's go for it. See if Tennessee doesn't again come with uh, pressure. They've got Westmoreland, number 42. He's back in the middle, sitting right in there. Nope, he drops back. Lorenz it. Slides out of the pocket, has time. Passes dropped inside the 15. It still would have been about a yard shy of the first down. Mike Byrne, 87, the junior wide receiver. And Kentucky turns it over on downs. Lorenzen actually bought himself some time and had a good look at it. Tried to throw a seed in there. Yeah, he really did. He tried to just drill it in there. Again, looking up. A lot of nice movement in the pocket. You see him moving around there. So Tennessee's defense holds him. After a pretty impressive drive, but once again, Kentucky gets inside the 20, and they can't do anything with it. There's one of the offensive linemen who might have been... Uh, their outside tackle, Reggie Coleman, number 71, kind of flinched on the play. Ten ball foul, ball start against the offense, movement in the offensive line, five yard penalty, still first down. That's our referee, Rogers Redding. And here's our Pizza Hut scoreboard. Georgia Tech all over Maryland. Few teams playing as well as Georgia Tech of late. They are a machine. Michigan, Ohio State. On a big rivalry weekend, 14 to 9, Wolverines on top of the Buckeyes. Here it's 14 to nothing in this border war. 
Lawson swings it out to Travis Henry. Travis Henry down the sideline, picks up the first down. Boy, and Ryan Murphy had to come from a long way, number 59. He's the, he's the middle linebacker. He's got first guy out of the backfield, and that's Travis Henry, and he had to run a long way to try and get him. Watch him. All of a sudden, he's going to see him out there. It's a little dump out to the flat. Good look off by Clawson right here. Now, bang, just drop it to him. And watch 59. He's running from the center of the field, just gets a hand on him. But every time Travis Henry gets the football, he knows what to do with it. And that's go north and south. He picks up yardage every time. That was a gain of 16. Quick word on Eric Parker. Sprained ankle will be evaluated. Don't know if he'll return or not. Here's Henry. Tries to get to the outside. Just about did it. Otis Grigsby hanging on by the shoelaces to bring down Travis. And Dave, what Kentucky is going to have to do is they're going to have to do what they call a run blitz. They've got to get people in the back in the backfield. They just cannot keep on catching at the line and allowing them to pick up three, four, five yards at a run. Mike Major, sunglasses on and the cap, headphone, defensive coordinator. Trying to get his troops to find a way to slow down. This Tennessee running game behind Travis Henry who breaks a tackle. He will go into the end zone. Touchdown Henry and the Volunteers. It travels 53 yards. Well, have you ever tried to tackle a block of cheese? Patrick Wiggins does right there and he just gets pushed down. And Travis Henry just takes it to the end zone. Fantastic run. He's so compact. He's got that great leg strength. And you just can't get your arms around him to wrap him up. 53-yard run by Henry gives him 96 rushing yards today. Up point after is up and good. He is now 40 yards shy of the all-time rushing record. Mike Major, all he can do is look to the skies for some divine intervention. To help slow down this Tennessee offense that has put up 21 points in the first quarter. We've got 34 seconds to play in the first stanza. Well, Dave, a couple things on this play. Good blocks right here at the point of attack. Good fullback block. But watch Henry. He's going to go out here and all of a sudden sees the hole inside. Bang. When he sees it, he recognizes it inside. And off he goes. See how he starts to the outside right there? Now, bang. He sees it right in there. Sees that little tiny seam. And you're just not going to bring him down with an arm tackle. You can see he gets that straight arm. When anybody straight arms you, what you got to do is you got to grab that arm. And that's a, that's like a free lever. You can't get your arms around him. Just a wonderful running back. <laughs> Travis Henry has been uh, <laughs> Look at there, he's been hit by about everybody on this team, but only a couple of guys have been able to bring him down. <laughs> they can have a piece of his jersey to take it home, huh? He amassed uh, every yard on that drive, all 67 yards for Travis. You know, he's a guy, when you look at him, Dave, he's only about 5'11". I say that's giving him a couple of inches. Yeah. I mean, to me, he looks like about 5'9", but he goes 220, but he bench presses over 450 oh, yeah. pounds. Great upper body strength, and you saw it with that, that straight arm. Bang, he just puts it out there. You know, talking with Randy Sanders, the offensive uh, coordinator, he said, we'd love to get him that record at home. I think he's got a good shot at it now. Shanklin. Trying to follow a couple of blockers. Takes it out to the 25, a return of 23 yards. Let's take a look at that Tennessee defense that's been awesome this season. Oh, they're in everybody's face. You can look at this. Nowhere for Lorenzen to go. D'Angelo Lloyd. John Henderson, the big defensive tackle, just swoops in there. And I mean, when he gets his hands on you, down you go. And then you get the blitz pressure from the outside, and Lorenzen is looking up. Again, there's Westmoreland. Pressure in the sack. There's just nowhere to go for uh, Kentucky. They've not been able to run the football. And look at that. Total yards. Almost Ooh. all of that came from the last drive. They went 43 yards in 11 plays and ate up four and a half minutes on the clock. Here's Chad Scott. You see a little bit of his speed as he outruns the defensive line and linebackers. Picks up maybe five or six on the play for the freshman. And that will probably do it for the first quarter as Jared Lorenzen now walks over to his sideline and Tennessee has posted a 21 spot on the board. Hal Mummy trying to figure out a way to get some points on the board and yet stop that man Travis Henry will come back for the second quarter after this. Lucky 21 to nothing. 
An impressive start for the Volunteers. Kentucky has it second down and six at their own 30. Lorenzen to Chad Scott. Has a couple of blockers out there. Gets close to the first down. Flipped up and over and will pick up the first down. Well, earlier this morning, Tennessee had a celebration where they honored what is a new memorial to all of the lettermen, the 5,500 men and women who have represented every sport and picked up a letter here at the University of Tennessee. It's just outside of the football offices. Johnny Majors makes his return as they also honored the 85, 89, and 90 SEC championship teams in the pregame ceremony. And one of the members is our own Charles Davis, <laughs> all SEC defensive back. Look at that smile. Lorenzen not smiling as he gets hit from behind. The pass falls incomplete. D'Angelo Lloyd put the pressure on Lorenzen. Boy, and they're just teeing off right now, Dave. They're coming after him just all, everybody from every different direction, getting a lot of pressure. Look at it. You see people coming in their face, getting up in his face. He's got to avoid that now. Backside pursuit. Number 99, D'Angelo Lloyd in there. You just have got to take some pressure off that offense. You just can't allow a quarterback to sit there. And uh, Kentucky has nowhere to go with their offensive line. They have they have five players today. And uh, Drew Ashcraft, who is the backup, he's the only backup across the line. He's never taken a snap. Looks like Tennessee got a head start. Flag is down. Pass is caught by Shanklin. Or excuse me, McCord inside the 20 down to the 14-yard line. Flag is down, but I believe it was Tennessee that jumped off sides. D'Angelo Lloyd, perhaps, but a big, big gain for Kentucky of 49 yards. Yeah, it is D'Angelo Lloyd, number 99. He jumps off sides. That's going to be declined. The pass is going to be good. And what a play it is. On the outside, you see Lloyd oh, right yeah. there? He's way off sides. Now watch what Lorenzen does. He just kind of steps up in there, just moves around in the pocket. And watch this, gets, just steps up, avoids it there. Now it just kind of drifts out here, doesn't it go across, and throws back across his body, and that's a perfect strike. McCord with the reception, a big play type of receiver, has hardly any cartilage left in his knee. It's like a bone-on-bone -bone situation. He can only practice about a half a practice a week. But he's gutting it out. The senior out of LaGrange, Georgia, with a big catch, puts Kentucky inside the red zone again. Lorenzen, buying time, pump fakes. Over the middle and threw it too low. He had a guy that could have got inside. The five and Derek Abney. And here's a look at our Bank of America first quarter stats. Man, just not a whole lot for Kentucky. They're not keeping the ball. They're not moving the chains. Only 17 rushing yards. Four first downs. It's not going to get it. You've got to be able to move. And when you get down inside the 20, that's where they get bogged down. That's the worst part of it. On the year, they've had 37 opportunities, 28 scores at 78, 75% of the time. That's 10th in the league. They've scored 16 TDs in those 37 times. That's 11th in the league. Chad Scott delays. Nowhere to go. He might as well sit down. <laughs> I didn't think this was the right play at first. It almost looked like a broken play. Well, if it's, I, it, if it's quarterback draw, it is. Well, it was a loss of seven, so hopefully that wasn't in the playbook. <laughs> well, did you see how Chad Scott reached? Uh, he kind of reached up for the football. Then he gets out there and he goes, "Oh boy, there's no going that way. Can't turn around. Look who's coming after me, number 98." Tennessee this season, 73 yards a game allowed on the ground. Today they've given up 10. They've held some good rushers to very few yards. They held South Carolina, a team that averaged 182 yards, to just 24. Here's Lorenzen. Chad Scott had it, dropped it, and that is what has been killing Kentucky all season long. I'm going to tell you what a marvelous play this is for the, for the result of it. Watch Lorenzen move around the pocket, pressure right there, step up, looking downfield, not not panicking, just finding his wide receiver, and then he drops the football. That would have been inside the five-yard line. It would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth down. They have to try a field goal. You just can't do that. You can't take your eyes off. Great receivers. I don't care what class you're in, <laughs> whether you're a freshman or not, you got to come up with those. Seth Hansen's field goal is up and good from 37 yards out. Seth Hansen, one of the best in the conference. Kentucky puts a three spot on the board, but they still trail big. Back in a moment. 
A little fire. Need a little of that up here. Charles, <laughs> bring that thing up here. 21 to 3. Tennessee leads Kentucky. Charles. I tell you what, you guys are too much. You know? <laughs> Charles drives all night, like nine hours from yeah. Tallahassee, Florida. He was doing a show last night. Dri gets a driver. How about him having a driver? Well, he had a driver to the game. I drove him to the game. <laughs> Can you believe his driver's name was Charlie Davis? Now, picture that. <laughs> no lie. That's the truth. <laughs> Charles has provided quite a few laughs this season. Leonard Scott on the return. Leonard Scott fumbles the football. Who's going to get it? A pile up at the 40. I believe Kentucky has it. Leonard Scott had some room. Scott had missed last week's game with a bad sprained foot. Well, as I was watching Scott there, I thought he got a little bit careless with the football, but golly, you cannot get over his courage when he runs up in there. He runs full blast. Now, if you're Kentucky, you've got to make you've got to make something happen. But watch this. He just runs full blast in there, gets a little careless there. Ball gets knocked out there. Derek Homer, I think, the one that caused the fumble. Now, Kentucky, you just need to fall on the football. Again, watch that. You say it was Derek Homer, number 42. Just got to fall on the football. Don't get fancy. Just fall on it. Well, Kentucky will have another opportunity after the set Hanson field goal. They're inside the Tennessee 50. Wide open for Chad Scott. Scott tripped up down to the 20. He goes and an injured ball on the play. Who is that? Might be Rashad Baker. First and 10 for Kentucky. Lorenzen under pressure again, throws to the corner of the end zone, nearly picked off by Jabari Greer, intended for Derek Smith, a little bit underthrown. Boy, and you have to love Jabari Greer. We talked about him early. Watch, top of your screen. He's just going to fight one-on-one -on -one right here. He's dropping back. He's going to be back into the corner now. He just comes on down. Now look at this, fight for a spot. And really, when you look at the size of Derek Smith, Derek Smith is six foot six. Jabari Greer is about five foot nine, five foot ten, but good fight in there. Second down and ten. Over the middle, pass is hey, caught. Right there. Down to the man. 15 by Jimmy Robinson. That'll bring up third and roughly five on the play, a long five. And you know what's interesting as I watch Jared Lorenzen out there, he's looking on his wrist, finding plays. What he's doing is he's moving in the pocket. When you do that, your wide receivers, they have to just keep on going on the pattern. You just cannot start pulling up and looking back. You have to continue on your pattern, find an open spot, because it's almost like a broken play. Well, they actually gave him a good spot. It's third down and four. In motion is Quentin LaCour. Oh, a lot of time. Lorenzen trying to find some time. He fumbles the football. He had an opportunity to run it and maybe pick up the first down, which is just inside the 10. Instead, he gets hit from behind and nearly coughed it up. John Henderson is the player that maintained his pursuit. Well, you've got to be able to realize when you've got pressure from the backside, he had to know where the first down yardage was, and all he had to do is make the 10-yard line. Just look at it. Big John Henderson, number 98, comes in and just kind of swoops that football out. But I th really think Lorenzen had a chance to run for that first down. Red zone once again fails Hal Mummy's offense. Here's Seth Hansen oh, already right. hit from oh, 37. Right. This from 32. It is up and good. And Seth Hansen is now 15 of 17 on the year. Hal Mummy, his team has put together back to back field goals, but would love to make those touchdowns. Back after a word from your local stations. Seth Hansen, a couple of field goals, only points for Kentucky so far today. And how about Seth? Not only is he having a great year on the field, but he was elected homecoming king at the University of Kentucky. Seth, 15 of 17 this year, one of the best in the country, the junior out of Dallas, Texas. Although how Mummy would probably rather not see him hit the no. field as much as he has this year. Well, it's red zone problems again. Last week we talked about it five times inside the 20. They got two field goals this time three times inside the 20. They get again two field goals. Kickoff taken at the two. 
Leonard Scott holds on to it this time. Gets out to the 25. Coming up next Saturday at a new time. 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. Tennessee and Bandy battle in Adelphia Coliseum. The Vols led by big John Henderson have the top defense in the SEC and they lead the conference with 41 sacks while Greg Zolman to Dan Stricker. That combo has been lethal all season for Vandy. So plan on joining us next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central for the JP Sports SEC Game of the Week. Tennessee got off to that two and three start, losing a couple of tough ones to LSU and Georgia, and of course Florida, but have rattled off four straight. Pass is caught by Troy Fleming, still on his feet. Finally knocked out of bounds inside the Kentucky 50 at the 46. Well, when Hal Mummy goes back and grades this film, he's going to say, how many missed tackles can you have? Well, Dave, but, we saw it against Georgia. Same oh, thing happened. You just, you have got to wrap them up. Out in the flat. This is just a little extended handoff. Now, right in here, you got to make that tackle. You just can't brush off. Yeah. Now, watch this. You can't just cross body block these guys. They're not going to go down. You've got to wrap them up. They are really lucky that they had their strong safety coming over there. If they don't have him coming over there, that's the strike up the band and Rocky Top starts playing. First down and 10. Clawson to pass over the middle. Nearly picked off, but a flag is thrown at the 20 yard line. That'll be pass interference. It was intended for Bobby Graham. It was Eric Kelly on the coverage. Eric with a broken thumb has a little rod placed in there this year. Well, and I see Marlon McCree down there. He's just upset as can be. It was a blitz. You're going to see pass interference against the defense, but it was a blitz. Everybody was picked up on Tennessee's front. They accounted for the two backers. They kept max protection in. Look at this. You see the blitz right there? Bang. Nobody gets there. Now look at this. Going up high. McCree had the best look. That's him, number 30. Again, going up high for the football. You got to play the ball. You cannot play the man. I think that's what the official called there. Tough call. Willie Gary nearly comes up with the interception. Incomplete, incomplete. That's one of those that, uh, you know, if you're if you're Eric Kelly, you got to feel like he played that pretty yeah. good. But on the other side, if you're Bobby Graham, you got to think I was interfered. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it, you could have thrown it, you could have not thrown it. Well, it's a perfect play there because they kept max protection, kept the, uh, the backers in there to cover. There's another one. Touchdown, Tennessee. Cedric Wilson, 31 yards. Boy, you talk about getting beat. This is getting beat. Leonard Burris just, he just got beat on the play. Again, Kentucky with that blitz. When you pick up the blitz, and when you see those backers in there, 8 and 50, and you see those kind of guys, well, he's going to trip at the tail end. But again, one-on-one -on -one coverage, no place. You just cannot cover like that. You can't give him that inside. That's the 10th touchdown reception for that man, Cedric Wilson three last week point after up and good he now has 22 in his career second all time at Tennessee behind Joey Kent Casey Clawson how about him eight of nine for a buck 39 and two TDs not bad we are back in Neyland Stadium Ernest Sims looking at some of the 106,000, 107,000 fans that are here today. This is a massive sight. When you talk about football oh. stadiums and football crowds, Alex Walls kicks off, continues to be a problem. Ball hits a Kentucky player loose. They come up with it, but going nowhere. Kentucky will have it at the 17. And Charles, uh, let's check on some of those injuries we've had early in this game. What's going on? Yeah, the freshman free safety number 16, Rashad Baker, has a high ankle sprain. They've retaped the ankle, and he's going to attempt to give it a go, but there's no guarantee he will be back. Number 80, Eric Parker, who went off earlier, they retaped him. They say he'll be good to go on offense, but they're going to take him off the special teams for the rest of today. And on the field, an injured Tennessee player. Boy, we've seen some players. Yeah, we have. Campbell looks like uh, he's in some serious pain. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Kentucky was lucky to keep that football that time. 
they bobbled the catch. It was kicked short. They just uh, didn't cover it well. And when they looked up, when that ball was finally picked up, whoom, down came the wall of Kentucky, uh, of Tennessee coverage team. Well, fans, log on to jpsports.com and check out our new fan shop. We have a great selection of merchandise from every school. The best news is you pay no shipping charges for your order. Also, all customers receive a free gift with their first order of $25 or more. Get a head start on your Christmas shopping and visit our fan shop today. And I'm wondering why our executive producer, Jimmy Rayburn, hasn't given us the JP winter weather gear as of yet. <laughs> Well, it's not winter yet. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, Charles has got all kinds of stuff. I see Charles show up today. He's got logos on everything. Yeah, he's got that JP hat on. <laughs> 28 to 6. How about Lorenzen? It takes like <laughs> eight guys to bring him down. Yeah. They call this a quarterback sneak. Nah, I don't think so. Not when you're about 280 pounds or so. Look at this quarterback <laughs> sneak. Watch him just kind of rumble, rumble, rumble. Everybody's, he's like a block of cheese. Look at him, he's still digging. There's people <laughs> grabbing him. Again, quarterback sneak? I don't think so, not when you gain nine yards. Look at him, just he's just, just kind of throwing people off. Hey, that's been the best play. Maybe they need to do that again. He picks up eight yards, second down and two now. Here's Scott. Here's Scott. Still on his feet, Chad Scott across midfield to the 45 of Tennessee. And they said he has some great speed. And we're sure. getting a good look at it, a gain of 30. Well, you remember that game we did in Georgia when he kept on slipping and falling down? Not today. This is just like an extended handoff. This little swing pass. And look at the freshman run. He gets out there, he makes a nice cut back across the field, makes a decision right there. Again, just looking downfield. That's nice. And you know what's interesting? He got some great blocks by his wide receivers on that play. First down and 10. And pass was low. Do they say it's caught? Yes, they do. It's Abney. That's a couple of yards shy the first down. Well, when you look at Hal Mummy, you wonder what's a safe lead? I mean, you're leading 28 to 6. But when you've got a cannon for an arm out here, a Jared Lorenzen, they never think that it's out of reach. Tennessee, they just need to stay with their game plan. Up and down the field, they've been very productive, putting points on the board. For Kentucky, they've got to get in the end zone with sevens. Lorenzen checking off, obviously, on second down and three. These are the kind of downs Kentucky can be successful with. Second and shorts, a lot of options. Play clock ticking down, but they get the snap off. They run the handoff to Derek Homer who is going to be shy of the first down Anthony Sessions first man on the spot. I don't know what that play is but <laughs> when he put the thumb up on the nose and wave. <laughs> Derek Homer he and Anthony White are the only two at Kentucky history that uh, have a thousand receiving yards a thousand rushing yards He has 125 receptions or 24 receptions in his career which ranked third at UK. He's just been a solid solid contributor for this program the senior out of Fort Knox really has been you have loved the way he plays just plays full speed all the time third down and two here's Chad Scott across the first down line and that'll be a first down and Chad Scott has become a very vital option for this Kentucky team he has nine touches today for about 84 yards I want to tell you there's no hole right here he just finds it and just plants and again look at he's got the marker in the distance just twists and get the gets the first down but again, I like the running of Chad Scott. I mean, he just, when he gets the football, he just flat out just pours it on, gets the hole in a hurry. Well, they're going to mark it real close to that first down line. We shall see here in a moment. And that is a first down. So a new set of downs coming for Kentucky. You see what Chad has done today. 35 rushing yards, 48 receiving yards. I mean, he's uh, averaging close to nine yards per touch. So... It, not that I'm a brain surgeon. I did go to Florida State. <laughs> but it sounds to me, give it to him twice, and uh, you're going to move down the football field in a hurry. Every two plays, you move the chains. <laughs> well, really important for Kentucky to stay in this football game, to stay, keep their players up, to come away with some points. And again, we're not talking three. We're talking seven. Anthony Kelly runs about a 60-yard dash across the field. Lorenzen lofts it to the sideline. That was intended for Derek Smith, his tight end and high school teammate. 
Boy, and has Derek Smith become quite a target. The big tight end, number 35, is a he's a big guy, 6'6, 260. And of course, we talked about him being a high school teammate. Uh, and he just he runs the runs nice patterns. He's really become a force here with 48 catches coming into this game. Second down and ten. Kentucky has had the ball. Their seventh play is a sack, the second of the day against Lorenz, and it's Anthony Sessions. He now has eight and a half sacks, and Tennessee's total now is 42. The school record is 47, set back in 1997. There's Sessions right there, just a bead right inside on the quarterback. Watch this. They're going to send him out on the pattern. Look at this. Nobody touches him. Even the back that's running the pattern, and that's Chad Scott. He needs to pick him up. You can't allow somebody to run like that. John Chavis with an outstanding game plan. Put pressure on the quarterback. Don't let him sit back there and make decisions. That 97 team, by the way, had 47 sacks in 12 games. And some more pressure. Lorenzen to his buddy Derek Smith. He's going to be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Andre Lott on the coverage. Andre now has five tackles. Well, this is four down territory if you're Hal Mummy. But what a nice pattern that time. Derek Smith, he runs like he runs like a wide receiver, even though he's 6'6, 260. Crossing pattern. You'll see right there, Lorenzen pick him up, just leaves him right in stride. Good speed there on the back side to bring him down. Got to got to run after him to catch him. He's Awfully big target. That was a gain of 16, but the problem is they needed 19. How about a quarterback sneak? That worked good just a minute ago. Well, it's fourth down and two from the 25. Lorenzen under pressure again. Looking for Derek Smith, but he was pressured by Anthony Sessions and John Henderson. Well, they just get on him in a hurry. Look at this. Henderson's right there, 98. He's already on the quarterback. You got to block him. You can't allow this to happen. You're flushing your quarterback out of the pocket. He's got nowhere to go. Wow. Just Tennessee just coming after him. John Henderson, we talked about a lot about him. Mm, look at those numbers, though, wow. for this Kentucky offensive oh. line. A combination of the offensive line and Jared Lorenzen using the new uh, non grounding rule where you can get out of the pocket and throw the ball away and not be penalized for it have really helped this Kentucky team in terms of reducing their sacks. Tennessee takes over first and ten. Been a while hey, since we've seen out. much of this offense, but every time they've had the ball, they've scored four possessions, four TDs. I have not been able to stop them, and uh, there's one of the reasons they haven't been able to stop them. Number 20. That's just hand it off and let him have it. That time, Travis Henry got hit in the backfield. Marlon McCree came across the line, hit him in the backfield. He drug him about three yards. Pick up that positive yardage. Travis Henry is now second all time as he passes Johnny Jones. And now he will try to track down James Stewart for the top spot. Bartholomew with his second carry of the season. Boy, I like Will Bartholomew. He's been a blocker all season long. Had one carry last week for the whole year. Picked up one yard. All his teammates patted him on the back, said great average, great average. But I'll tell you, there's a lot more to football than just carrying the football. And you need that. You need to have a fullback that can come up and make that great rip block. Then the back makes the cut. And that's what number 45 Bartholomew does. Bartholomew has had eight receptions. In the last couple of weeks, as Tennessee moves, look like Anthony Herrera, the sophomore out of Naples, Florida, got a little head start. Will be whistled for it. Yeah, they're trying to draw him off with that hard count. It didn't work. They drew their own team off. False oh, start. Get the offense moving in the offense right line. Right there. Prior to the snap, five-yard penalty, still third down. Quick update: Tony Campbell. Got injured on the special teams. The linebacker, linebacker for Tennessee has a sprained knee, and he will be evaluated. But it doesn't look like it's a serious knee injury. That is good news. Penalties today: Kentucky three for 25, Tennessee two for 10. It's third and 10. Only the second third down conversion opportunity for the Vols. Clawson hits Cedric Wilson. That's a first down to midfield. Derek Tatum on the coverage, a gain of 26 yards, and move the chains, please. 
And you talk about quarterback under poise, under pressure with poise. That's exactly what Casey Clawson did. Watch this. They're going to have a blitz on him. Watch him step up in the pocket. He sees the blitz coming now. Just avoid it. And he had a chance right there to run. And he saw his wide receiver, Cedric Wilson, coming across. He just, bang, just threw it to him. And the, you see Cedric Wilson at the tail end right there. Oh, man. I had it. Cedric Wilson, four catches, 77 yards. Clausen goes up top, has his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Tennessee. It's, well, they call him out of bounds. They said he was out of bounds. It's Dante Stallworth. It's a 47-yard pickup, but it looked like he might have snuck in. But, of course, I am about 700 yards away from the play. <laughs> well, the problem with the play for from Kentucky's standpoint is that number 20, Eric Kelly, never looks back. This ball is just laid up. You see him, he's just running right with him. He never looks back. Doesn't even see the football. Again, right in here is where they say he goes out of bounds. He almost balls. Oh, he the ball. did. Yeah. Great call. Excellent. I guess call. that's why he stands there, the official. Yeah, that's why he's right there to look <laughs> yeah. at that. He watches those feet, and right there, he's out of bounds. But you can't play corner that way. You can't guard that way. You got to look back. Travis Henry goes in from two yards out. His third rushing touchdown of the afternoon. His ninth of the season. This is just power. Big man on big man. They just push him off at the point of attack. He's got, he just has to fall over those big linemen. You got to credit good enough front. Wells and Champion right there at the, at the point of attack. Right up in the middle. Good block by the fullback coming up in there too. But you're not going to stop. Travis Henry. Willie Gary's got to put his arms around him. Yeah. Point after up and good. Gary had a good shot at him, but yeah. just stuck his shoulder in him. Yeah, that, they're trying to roll block him. Just don't bring him down with roll blocks. Five possessions now for Tennessee. The result has been the same. A touchdown. It's 35 to 6. He's just, a, he's just such a competitive football. Just a competitive football player. With Tennessee's win last week over Arkansas, that made them bowl eligible this year. And the Southeastern Conference once again has plenty of opportunities to send teams for a uh, pleasant week of activities. Florida, Auburn, Mississippi State, South Carolina. How about their turnaround? A big one today against Clemson coming up. But LSU, Georgia, Ole Miss, and Tennessee all eligible to go to a bowl game. And there's a chance that there could be nine teams bowl eligible. But I'm sure the SEC will probably find a slot for that ninth team if they do have that. Now, where'd they come from? What's that sign say? France. 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 <laughs> well, welcome to Knoxville and right. Stadium. Travis Henry had a huge game against Florida. 37 carries, 170 yards, 175 yards versus the Gators in that tough, tough loss. Then he had 135 versus a great Southern Miss defense. Put up 115 against a great South Carolina defense. Short kick taken at the 15-yard line. Martez Johnson on the return. Kentucky will have it just inside their 25-yard line. 3.16 to go in the second quarter. Jared Lorenzen back on the field. We will probably see Jared most of this game, if not all of it. Uh -oh because Mark Perry is a senior and they want to have they want to save their red shirt their true freshman quarterback put a red shirt on him and here's a look at our pizza head scoreboards Georgia Tech over Maryland 28 to nothing uh, how about Missouri first and ten Dad Scott, he might have gained 10, 11 on the play. That'll be a first down. Well, I like his running. I'll tell you this. I, like I said, I've talked all game. I mean, you wish you had a little bit more. If you're a Kentucky fan, you say, hey, you wish you were back in this football game. But Chad Scott, he's running hard every time. The freshman getting a, a chance to start. When Hal Mummy looks up at the clock saying it can't tick away fast. I want to get back in at halftime. Clock stop at 309. 
Lorenzen stands in there, fires a bullet. That's got a sting on a day like today to Derek Abney. Well, you know that's got a sting. Oh, that's a hard pass. He just throws a rope in there. But how about Lorenzen? You know, moving around the pocket, good pocket presence, pushing people away. They just need some other attackers. They need some, uh, need to have some blocking up front. Hold up there, the offensive line. For Tennessee, it's a joy. If you're a defensive lineman, let me tell you, you love this part of the game. You know they're going to pass it. It's pass rush time. Lorenzen, 13 to 23, 168 yards today. It's second down and four. Here's Scott. Nearly gets through that line of scrimmage. You were talking, uh, you were here doing the Arkansas game last week, Dave, and you were talking about how Travis Henry, if he gets a yard past the original line of scrimmage, usually it's going to be a big game. You got to yep. get your running back going, and Chad Scott looks like he's the same type of back. Give him a yard past the exactly line of scrimmage. Exactly right. Well, they talk it continuing a run is what they call it. Once you get to the line of scrimmage, that's where you make your burst. If you get through the line of scrimmage clean, and that's what Tennessee does so well in their running game as they get Travis Henry through the line, then it's just make the decisions on the defensive backs. Chad Scott's given Kentucky a little bit of that today. 96 total yards for Chad Scott. It's Lorenzen, and he picks up the first down. Stephen Marsh, the strong safety, trips him up, but a first down. Coming up next week, we will come to you from Nashville, but not Vanderbilt Stadium. How about Adelphia Coliseum? As we will have a packed house. Tennessee and Vandy, the in-state rivalry continues. The Commodores and the Vols on a special time, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. Lorenzen to Derek Homer. Homer gets a first down, or close to it. I'll see where they mark it. Should be good enough for a first down. Anthony Sessions trips him up. And once again, here we go. Kentucky picking up first yep. down after first down. Get but they only have six points to show yeah. for it. You get down to the red zone, you start bogging down. Now, do you use timeouts? I think you do. You got a chance to go in on a positive note, maybe get a seven. Tennessee, remember they burned that one timeout early. They got two left. Do the Wildcats. Chad Scott, nowhere to go that time. He's hit at the line of scrimmage by Stephen Marsh and D'Angelo Lloyd. And a timeout taken by Kentucky as we <laughs> Charles, of course, proud of the 85 team. 35 to 6. Our score here. Lorenzen! Touchdown, Kentucky. Quentin McCord with his fifth touchdown reception of the year. The senior. And Lorenzen went down on the play. He's hopping to the sideline. I so this could be a huge blow to oh, Kentucky. Boy. Seth Hansen makes it a 35 to 13 game. Lorenzen's 18th touchdown pass of the seat. It's Leonard Scott. Leonard Scott. He is a speedster, so when he gets a crease, everybody takes a collective deep breath, waiting to see what will happen, but not much on that return of 25 yards. So Lorenzen will head to the locker room with 45 seconds left. And there is Mark Perry, the senior. He will probably come in. First and 10 now. Travis Stevens in the game. All right, plays over. He picks up nine on the play. Travis, the junior out of Clarksville, Tennessee. It's 1985. <laughs> you just had a look at their three losses. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Three plays, three losses, but that's it. I mean, we're talking about dominant. And they're 35 and one in Neyland Stadium over that time period. Here's Casey Clawson uh -oh. with a little. Wide receiver screen down to the 40-yard line is Cedric Williams. And Casey Clawson's running up the it, line it, saying, hey, it. get down quick. We're going to spike the football, stop the clock. Who knows? They may be able to get another field goal. Clock stops while they move the chain, so that allows them to get up on the ball. But Clawson with good leadership. I, mean, I said Williams. I meant Wilson. I've said his name enough today to know that it's Wilson. <laughs> yeah. 
Will Bartholomew gets out of bounds. I mean, they're certainly going to get in field goal range. You wouldn't think that. With, you start a series with 40 seconds on the clock, and they've just they run just perfect offense. I mean, every play that they've run, when they had max protection, bang, they just use that one-on-one -on -one out there using Cedric Wilson. Just uh, just been a marvelous offensive scheme for them. Timeout taken by Tennessee with 14. Like I do. Well, I think it's kind of worked. <laughs> he came in completing 63% of his passes. I think that number will go up. 12 of 13 today is Casey Clausen. Amazing performance. Make that 13 of 14 as that pass is caught by Dante Stallworth. That'll pick up a first down, a gain of 13. That'll stop the clock with four seconds left, and that'll be enough time for Alex Walls to truck onto the field and try to make it 38 to 13. And Dave, I talked about the cold weather. Would it bother Casey Clausen? Forget it. It doesn't bother him. Look at this. He's just throwing like it's 75 degrees on a sunny day. He just can't throw it any better than that. And of course, it always helps to have those wide receivers that just can pull that football in. Jim has to be quite happy with his oh. son's performance this year. I think I'd be real pleased. Of course, uh, it was interesting in talking with Jim yesterday. He said that uh, his second high school coach was Jim Bonds, who roomed with Troy Aikman at, uh, at co in college, and uh, just a marvelous influence on his son. And he told me, he said, my younger son is better. He said he's only about, oh my I, I know, gosh. I'm serious. That's what he said. He said, now there's the real talent. His son was with him yesterday. Look. Combined over the last game and a half, Casey Clausen has been uh -oh. unbelievable. I can't do the math on this because I'm not smart enough, but I, his, <laughs> his efficiency rating would be through the roof. Tennessee 35-13 beginning for the third quarter. Let's check in with Charles Davis. Position on Jared Lorenzen. I think he's going to be back. It was a, they turned his ankle over, and uh, they iced it down, and they're taping him right now. He says he's going to try to play. Tough first half, obviously, for the Wildcats. What did you talk to your team about at the half? I told defense just try and tighten up, stay with them better in coverage. And offense, we just put it in the end zone rather than kick field goals. We're in a game. So that's what we're going to try to do second half. All right, thanks a lot, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Good work, Charles Davis, as always. Kentucky will try to... Stop Tennessee. They had six possessions, and each time they scored something, five straight possessions were a touchdown. Their sixth possession to end the half was a field goal. And you know what happens? Every time you see a wounded quarterback, let me tell you what you do. You go after him even harder. Expect Tennessee to go after him. Steve Scout, a ferry to kick off. And it's Leonard Scott. Across the 20 to the 22 yard line. And Travis Henry had a great first half with three rushing touchdowns. Oh, just strength. He gets outside, he's got the speed, just runs through tackles. Great vision into the hole, pushes off people. This single person isn't going to bring him down. We saw it last week. We're seeing the continuation of Travis Henry and the uh, and the jaunt towards the record, and there's a there's a good jaunt, 53 yards for a touchdown. Again, just just powering his way in there, sees that end zone and picks up yardage. Go right back to him, let him have some more. Here he is, Henry keeps his feet, gets a couple on the right, play. Guys, Willie Gary over. brings him down. In the first half, Henry had 101 yards rushing on 10 carries. Not bad today now. 11 for 103. Pretty good average, too. 9.4. I think that'll work for you. He has now had 13 career 100 yard games. And he is tied in that department with Jamal Lewis and Jay Graham for career 100 yard games. Not bad for Travis. We'll throw out to Bartholomew. That will pick up the first down out to the 35-yard line, a gain of 10. Chris Gayton brings him down. And that's kind of a keep them honest play. What you do in that situation is just go to somebody that uh, doesn't get the ball a lot. Wow. First half possession. Oh, wow. And they scored quickly. They scored quickly. They time of possession in the first half. Kentucky had it for 20 minutes. Tennessee had it for 10. Yeah, but look at that last slip up. I mean, a field goal. I mean, goodness gracious. Philip Fulmer could not be happy with that. <laughs> Five touchdowns. Henry with a stiff arm. Still on his feet. 
Travis Henry. Oh, dives man. forward, got the first down. Two more missed tackles. They're going to count them by the dozen. Grayson Smith misses them the first time. And then Derek Tatum on the outside. Smith right there. See him 50. He's going to be right in there. He's got him, right? Push down. That's a missed tackle. There comes the second one, Derek Tatum. And look at the yardage after the missed tackle. Picks up about 8, 10 yards afterwards. Oh, Travis Henry. Mm. 19 yards shy of becoming Tennessee's all-time leading rushers. I don't care how many carries they have to give it to him. He's getting that record today. There he is on the toss sweep. Kentucky plays that well. Marlon McCree led the way. Marlon, great speed. Boy, and you know it has to be disappointing for players like Marlon McCree. I mean, he's a senior. He came back with great expectations. Number 30 was going to, you know, have his year. He's just a tenacious player. He's not big, 6'1", 195. He says, but when that game goes on, he says, I play like Goliath. He said, I just feel strong out there. Just a great story. Fun to talk to. Eight brothers and sisters, 21 nieces and nephews. And he's, he's already graduated. I know. Clawson, wide open. Is the catch called a completion? I would believe so. Eric Locke, guy they're trying to get more involved as the season goes along. Along the former transfer from Alabama picks up 11 with that reception. Well, Dave, I talked about Eric Kelly not looking back. Eric Kelly kept on running. I mean, look, see how far down he is, way down there. He always got to come all the way back up here and touch. Again, look at this separation. You've got to watch that wide receiver. You cannot give that much yardage. Got to look back. For Eric, six catches this season. A whistle on the play. Something got loose on the field, but we will continue on a first and 10 for the Volunteers. Henry nowhere to go that time. Matt Leo leading the way for Kentucky. Named Matt Leo, by the way, we need to mention his name. A senior out of Miami, Florida, has had a great career this year for the Kentucky Wildcats. Named one of 11 finalists in the nation for the Good Works team. And when you go back to the summer of 99, perhaps his biggest achievement in life was saving a child, a little baby that was having trouble breathing while he was visiting his girlfriend. And uh, without his efforts and his help, that child would have died. That's a wonderful story. He's a good guy, too. Just a lot of fun to talk to. And just good. His parents come to all the games. Casey Closet. And listen to Kentucky fans. I think they think they first finally got a sack. But he made two three yards, so that's not a sack. And Dave, by, by the way, when we while we have a moment, we want to wish Bud Ford uh, to get yeah, well. Bud. Yeah, Bud. Had bad had back surgery a couple days ago. Yeah. And uh, he's back at home now, from what I understand. Resting, I wouldn't say comfortably, but he's resting. No. Of course, a longtime sports information director here at Tennessee. And uh, talked with him last week, and uh, I don't know that he knew about this surgery, but great to have him back. You know the interesting thing? The last game he missed, and you talk about superstition, 1984, I think they said, and it was Kentucky, and Kentucky beat Tennessee. There are a lot of worried people. Over the middle. Oh. Big hit, but David Martin still on his feet. Touchdown, Volunteers, 33 yards. How about the catch and run from David Martin? How about the missed tackle, too? Marlon McCree, you've got to wrap him up. You just cannot knock down great players. And that's exactly what David Martin is. He's a good player. He's an excellent football player. When he catches the football across the middle, you just can't knock him down. Watch this. Crossing pattern coming across the middle. Watch number 30 right there. He's going to bang him, right? Boom. You can't just give him a shoulder block. If you do, he bounces off. And look at downfield. Getting great blocks by the rest of the receivers. Goes into the end zone for Ball's seven away. more. Point after up and good. My goodness. Talk about a team that's got it going. Casey Clawson now, 16 of 17, 305 yards, three touchdowns, balls big. Afternoon, U.S. hockey cap. I don't even know what you call that. <laughs> what I do you call that? <laughs> Temperature not expected to get over 40 at barely over 30. 
Scoreboard's lit up pretty hot, though. 45-13. It's Ernest Sims. Ernest takes it out to the 27-yard line for the Wildcats, a return of 20. And J Jared Lorenzen has the helmet strapped up, got that bad wheel right before halftime on a touchdown pass, got tackled, sprained his ankle. And we'll try to give it a shot. We'll see how he can go. Look how taped up that right ankle is. That has yeah. got a couple of rolls of tape on there. Yeah, sure does. You can see how hard it's taped, too. What you do is you tape right over top of the shoe, trying to pull it up tight. It's going to be a lot less mobile in that pocket. It's not going to be able to move around like he did in the first half. His legs got him out of quite a bit of trouble in the first half. Lorenzen stands in there and fires. Oh. Hit a receiver right in the hands. It was Quentin McCord. And you talk to all these coaches, and, you know, you look, go back and look at game film, and it's like guys are working hard. They're really busting their tails. And drop pass. Yeah, they dropped the ball. Yeah, exactly. And talking with John Chavis, he said, I said, well, what has happened with Kentucky this year? And he said, well, the first thing is drop balls. They've had a lot of drop balls. And he's right. Second down and 10. I'll cut him some slack receivers today with this weather. And Jared throwing at 90 miles an hour. Here's Chad Scott, who's met at the line of scrimmage by D'Angelo, or excuse me, John Henderson, 98. Now they're, they're a matched pair out there, 98 and 99, Henderson and uh, D'Angelo Lloyd. But you just don't run by them. Line of scrimmage, they shed blocks well. See, get off the block, move to it, just get them big arms out there. That's what you got to do. You got to have that separation. Outland, trophy candidate, Bronco Nagurski, award winner for best defensive player in the country. Kentucky, three of nine on third down conversions, facing a third and ten. Lorenzen back in the pocket. Hits his man. First down for the Wildcats. They'll keep it rolling. It's Derek Homer, gain of 13, brought down by Jabari Greer. And Jared Lorenzen now. So while he limps away, a couple of more records have fallen. National records. Go ahead, Dave. I've got yeah. Again, just moving around, just looking down there, and he gets knocked down on the play, Dave. Well, Jared Lorenzen is uh, two more NCAA records have fallen total offensive yards by a freshman he has 3700 yards of total offense and total offensive plays by a freshman he has 610 rushing and passing plays combined this season a couple of more he's just shattering everybody's records oh, talk about shattering look at big john henderson he was two yards in the backfield when the ball was handed off You've got to, he's going against the freshman, Antonio Hall, number 73, but you got to occupy him longer than this. Right side of your screen, look at that, just in the backfield. Boy, oh boy, what a force. I talked to him yesterday, Dave, about it, being a junior, and there's so much speculation about him going to the NFL. And I asked him, I said, you know, what is the percentage? He says, there is no percentage. You know, people talk about it. I haven't really even thought about it. It's an option. That's all I'm saying. It's an option. I'll look at it when this season is over. Well, in talking with Philip Homer, he said, we need to evaluate at the end of the season. These coaches, they have a, they will give you a really good idea of where you're going to be in the draft. Flag on that play, Dave. Clinton McCord was the intended receiver. Teddy Gaines might be penalized for that hold. And there's another flag back at the 32 of Kentucky, back at the line of scrimmage. We'll see what that one is as well. Everybody might be holding because that one was thrown in the center of the line, and the one thrown downfield is most likely defensive holding, but it may be offensive holding too. I'm going to cipher it out here, figure out what's going on. Well, tell us. We're ready. His mic's frozen. Uh -oh. <laughs> Personal foul on the defense. I see that one. Oh, I didn't see what the other call was. It was something against the offense. What? No. First down. Both against the defense. Oh. I think we had pass interference and a personal foul as well. Of course, how Mummy wants that hold. Uh, there's the first half possession for Kentucky. A couple of punts. They lost the ball when they went for it twice on fourth downs, and they got a couple of field goals in that last touchdown to Quentin McCord right before halftime. And they, they needed to start off well, and they got three and out, three and out, I should say, and uh, that really hurt them. 
You just uh, you want to take the steam out. You got to, this is like a slugfest. You got to figure, hey, they get, they're going to score, or we're going to score. They're going to score, or we're going to score, and it just did not happen. His personal foul has marched off. This is 15 yards. That that'll give him a first down. Well, they'll move the football now into Tennessee territory. Ball will be placed at the volunteer 48 yard line and a new set of downs for the Wildcats. Jared Lorenzen continues on bad ankle and all. <laughs> Ernest Sims getting oh. hit right on top of the helmet. And Anthony oh. Sessions helps him up. Boy, he just picked him up. When you come in there and you've got your backers rotating in that coverage, you talk about a herder. Watch the right of your screen. Coming in the picture, there's the pass. And boom, you're just coming across just trying to knock the ball out of there. Just don't want to throw into that rotating coverage when it's coming your way. Helmet to helmet collision like that, very dangerous. Luckily, everybody's okay. He just runs back in there. He says, I'm all right, coach. Don't keep worry, I'm fine. Anthony Sessions, one of those 19 seniors, by the way, playing in their last game at Neyland Stadium. Ran through the tee for the last time. Second and 10, play clock running down. Lorenzen has to call a timeout. He will come over and talk things over with his coach. 45-13, 825 to go in the third. About the only person or animal in this building that's not cold is that that, that <laughs> dog. Oh, that, oh good. Hey, I'm glad you said that. Smoky. Wonderful looking dog, isn't he? He is. I'll tell you. <laughs> Smokey having a good day at the old ball yard. 45-13 is our score. Kentucky just used a timeout as they look at second down and 10. Looking for Derek Smith. Pass just overthrown. Lorenzen a little upset with himself. And how about Tennessee? They just continue. They, if they had 200,000 tickets, they'd sell them. <laughs> there is a new average home attendance set this year by the Tennessee fans. 107,595. Now it gets to be a race to see who kind of expands that little crowd a little bit more. But uh, marvelous fan support here. Just a wave of orange. Well, up some movement on the left side of the line for Kentucky. It looked like Kip Sixberry, their yeah. left guard. That's when you're in that up stance and you kind of get that weight going back and all of a sudden there's nothing you can do about it. That's what happened to Kip Sixberry that time. Just kind of leaning back. Dead ball foul. Ball start. Against the offense. Movement in the offensive line. Prior to the staff. Five guard penalty. Still third down. Now Mummy will regroup at the end of this season. I asked him if he's going to get some time off. He says absolutely not. They're hot on the recruiting trail. They'll probably wrap it up first couple weeks of February, and then he'll take some time off. But uh, he'll go back, look at all these game tapes, figure out what went right, what went wrong. Lorenzen, pass batted in the air. Falls incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down and 15. You know, I was looking across the field. I couldn't tell if that was smoke or fog starting to come down in there. <laughs> you can see it in the top of the uh, screen there. It almost looks like it's a fog starting to set in. Some of the folks have uh, already headed to the turnstiles with 8-11 to go in the third quarter. As it is quite cool. All right, fourth down. You're on your own 46-yard line. What do you do? You got to give it up. You got to punt it away. People might say, "Hey, you got to go for it." No way. Hakulak punts it away. Eric Parker back to return the punt, and he does so. Eric Parker across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Eric Homer punt of 35, return of five. In Tennessee leads 45-13. Back after a word from your local stations. Tier is looking for their fifth consecutive win. Kentucky trying to snap this seven game losing streak. Doesn't look like that will happen today unless a miracle occurs. 45 13 our score. First down and 10 for the Vols. Travis Henry. 
on the carry. Travis needs 14 yards to break the all-time Tennessee rushing record. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Absolutely. Don't you forget it. That's right. Don't forget it. I don't want to send Dave Rowe over to your house. <laughs> hey, how many times do you think Travis Henry gets it in a row here? Every time he should get it. And now they shotgun, man. You might have to hand it off to the forward. Yep. They do so. Travis gets a couple. Marlon McCree with his fourth stop of the afternoon. Well, there's no more fitting tribute than to get this at home. And that's what they that's what the Tennessee team wants to do. They want uh, Travis Henry to break that record at home. He looks up the scoreboard and says, hey, I only need a few more yards. You got a lot of time. I'll take it again. I asked Travis yesterday before the during their little walkthrough, and he said, "You thinking about any number in particular?" And he says, "Yeah, 135 kind of sticks out." <laughs> yeah, that's what he needed. Bad snap, Clausen picks it up. Under pressure, he gets hit hard, dropped at the 11. Jeremy Caudle, one of those true freshman tackles, makes the stop, a loss of 13, and now Tennessee will have to punt it away. Well, this is high snap on the shotgun. You can see again the ball off center. Well, credit Claus, and he doesn't force the ball, doesn't get into trouble, just takes his sack. And that's just a that's a heads-up play. And you talk about a freshman, you talk about maturity. That's what we talked with Philip Fulmer yesterday. He said, hey, I like his control out there. He doesn't panic. Tennessee's first punt of the day. And it ain't a good one. Oh, well, he's cold. <laughs> Got up some slack. <laughs> Ball rolls near the 50-yard line. It'll be down at the 48, 35-yard kick. Ice House congratulates Frankie Lundford from Tuskegee Institute, Alabama, for winning with Get the Call. Get the Call is your chance to win great football prizes every Saturday while enjoying the J.P. Sports Game of the Week. You could be one of over 100 lucky winners every week that Get the Call during the telecast. See participating retailers for details. Ice House, the official beer of JP Sports Broadcast, reminds you to drink responsibly. So get in the game and score big with Get the Call. Must be 21 or older. Rules and regulations apply. No purchase necessary. See official rules for details. Plank Road Brewery, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 45, 13, 548 to go in the third. Lorenzen, bad ankle, still in the game. Tennessee read that quite well. I think Kentucky lucky to get it back to the original line of scrimmage. Derek Homer with a heads up play. Anthony Sessions on the stop. Yeah, they tried that play many times. That little swing pass, that's like almost like an extended handoff. And that time Tennessee had it stopped at the point of attack. But you're going to see less and less of Lorenzen moving around in the pocket, less and less mobility as that ankle starts to stiffen up. But uh, you got to give the uh, young freshman a lot of credit. Going out there, he's hurt. Hurt his thumb. They thought we'd miss, he'd miss a game. Sprained his ankle. Would take out a lot of quarterbacks, not Jared Lorenzen. How about the reverse? Quentin McCord. McCord runs out of bounds. Picks up the first down, down to the 35-yard line. That'll be a gain of a dozen for Quentin. Quentin playing in his final game. Well, I was watching the movement of the big defensive line out here. When you get this, when you get this reverse, and you look up there and you see those 90s running after you, ooh, Nelly. <laughs> Five receivers on first and ten from the 35 of Tennessee. <laughs> Lorenzen. Sees some room, takes it down to the 25-yard line. How about Jerry Lorenzen and the guts he has with a bad ankle, taking it right up the middle for about nine yards. Yeah, you don't expect this. Now, if this, if he had had a good ankle, he probably would have run over the safety. But again, just trying to get down, avoid an injury right in here, get down, protect that ankle a little bit, but picks up that first down. And that was a check with me play on the line of scrimmage. A lot of times you'll call that. You go in the huddle, you say, check with me. When they get up and line up, you'll see them make an audible call after the defensive set, uh, team sets. Well, they gave him 10 on the carry, so he picks up the first down. It was a rocket to Abney right in the rib cage. That's a couple times today. Abney's had about 10 yards between him and 
Lorenzen, and he's, he's had to take the bullet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you talk about taking the bullet. That is a, that ball's coming at you in a hurry. I mean, in a hurry. Abney, three receptions, 18 yards today. I tell you, Lorenzi could have looked downfield that time and held on to the football. He had one of those, uh, one of his wide receivers coming into the post pattern. He was wide open, just didn't have enough time to look downfield. Chad Scott tripped up on a nice defensive play by Stephen Marsh, sophomore out of Wingate, North Carolina, getting a lot of action today and playing quite well. Yeah, Marsh coming up, of course, we saw earlier, we saw that injury to Jabari Greer. And uh, Marsh getting a lot of playing time. Charles, are you with us here in the third quarter? I'm still with you, Stephen Marsh, the, the guy that you just pointed out making that nice tackle. He's replaced Rashard Baker, who will probably not return today with a high ankle sprain. Nice tackle from the secondary. Thank you, Charles. Thought you left. Thought you quit. Thought, thought he fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Batted in the air and picked off by Gensu. Stephen Marsh. Flag is down at the 23-yard line. When you bat that ball in the air, it only means trouble because the defensive secondary reacts so quickly to it. Credit to Tennessee, Tennessee secondary getting to the football. Now, what's the call? Under return. A face, face mask. mask. Against the white team. The five yard penalty enforced from the end of the run. Tennessee has a ball. You want down. your safeties to react to the ball. When the ball hits right here, and it goes up like that. That's fair game. And then you see him come right in there and see Marsh reacting to the football. They used to have a ball. They used to have a ball call that was called fire. Once a ball is thrown, if it tip, tips up into the air, you just yell fire, fire, and all the defensive back knows that the, the ball is up in the air. Just the seventh interception for this defense, which had the second fewest in the game since coming in. Travis Henry. Yeah, there's no surprise in this. This is uh, Travis Henry time. And if you're a defense, you know that. You've got pride if you're a Kentucky defensive player and you say, hey, we're not going to let him get the, run, the record against us. If you're Tennessee lineman, you're down there, you're saying, hey, let's get it for him. Ronnie Riley in on the tackle. There's that offensive line talking to each other. Yeah, they'd like nothing better than to, to get it for him. Interesting. Uh, I think Anthony Munoz is out. But I saw a change there. A little play action. Claws in an out pattern. Missed his man. It was Cedric Wilson wide open. Got a flag down on the play, I believe. There it is. Ball start against the offense. That'll back him up five. Now it's time to look at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the Game, brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And it was the touchdown of this quarter. David Martin would take the pass from Casey Claus and get whacked by Marlon McCree. And race 33 yards for the touchdown. The drive would take 77 yards and 406 off the clock. And there is David Martin. That is our BMW ultimate drive of the game. And that was a good one. There's well, been a we've bunch, got a bunch of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to tell you something. There's been about five or six drives of the game. Oh, I'm going. I'm listening. 217 to go in the third quarter. Third down and nine. Here comes a As blitz. Kentucky refused the penalty. Here comes a blitz. Oh, they picked him up. Uh oh. To the near side, it's David Martin. Gets pulled down by Marlon McCree, and good thing Marlon's the fastest player on that defense, or David Martin would have scored again. That was a pickup of 26. Boy, when you live by the blitz, we've talked about a lot of times you die by the blitz. Perfect call, little slip screen out to the flat. You see the big lineman going downfield. Good in 74 is getting some blocks. You see 64 Wells down there. And you're right, if Marlon McCree doesn't catch him from the back, he goes in for the score. Total yards, 453 for Tennessee now. They came in averaging 356. 
Not some more cheese runs. No, nope, not this time. Casey claws it. Pass is dropped at the 25. Golly, that's something that you don't see very often. A dropped pass. Next week, Tennessee and Vandy at a special time. Our season finale, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. Commodores and Vols renew their rivalry. Greg Zolman, one of the best in the league. That quarterback for the Commodores. And, of course, Travis Henry will continue his assault on some of these Tennessee record books or records next year, next week in Nashville from Adelphia Coliseum. Here's Casey Clausen looking for Cedric Wilson. Picked off. Derek Tatum at the 30. Down at the 31. About the only thing that has gone wrong all day for Kentucky. And Casey Clausen gets into a little shoving match right near midfield. With some of the Kentucky players, maybe Marlon McCree, I see him in there. Well, what happened was they went after Clawson. After he threw the interception, they went after him, and it was about 20 yards downfield. Now, this is the interception. It was thrown high. It was going to be that fade down the sideline. Derek Tatum is the one who intercepts it. We'll see if you see Clawson. See him coming over there? He's over on the right-hand side. He's 20 yards downfield. You don't really see him in that part of the play, but two defensive players went after him. Again, good look there by Cloth, by Tatum, number 21. Look the football in. Way downfield was where that altercation happened in front of the uh, Kentucky bench. Derek Tatum gets the start today. Kenneth Grant has broke a thumb. Not playing a whole lot today. And I said, only thing going wrong for Kentucky. I meant the only thing going wrong for Tennessee. A lot's going wrong for Kentucky, much like that. A drop pass once again. Derek Smith, the intended receiver, 45. 13 are our score. Charles, what's going on with Michael Munoz? Yeah, he's he sprained his ankle a little bit. They've retaped it. They think that he will probably go back into the ball game. And you know he'll want to do that with his family in attendance. We talked about his dad earlier, the mom, Didi, and his sister will join him here next year to play basketball for the Lady Vols. Lady Vols open their season tonight here in Knoxville. Ranked number two in the country, preseason poll, looking for their seventh national championship. Lorenzen sacks. And you know what? I thought his ankle just gave out on him. That's not the Jared Lorenzen that I've seen. It looked he just fell right down in the, in the spot. That ankle has got to be sore. Watch the tail end of this play. He's looking downfield. Now, this is not the Jared Lorenzen that we've seen before. I wonder, let's see how he just kind of falls down there. He didn't even try to break a tackle or anything. Again, watch this. See right there? That's not Jared Lorenzen. That's not a healthy Jared Lorenzen. Third sack of the day, second for Eric Westmoreland. Remember, the school record 47, set 97 for a team that played 12 games. Pressure again. Lorenzen still on his feet. He's going to run it. Jared Lorenzen picks up the first down oh. with basically one ankle. Oh, you talk of, you know, there are games of courage. That young man's got a lot of courage. You talk about four more years or three more years at Kentucky. Watch this. I mean, we're talking about his ankle is killing him. Jobs back, it's his, it's his step ankle, so he, he just shakes off somebody. Look at that pile fall off of him. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> it's kind of like you're shitting him. And then just has the stretch. He knows how far he has to go. Just yeah. stretches out there and makes the first down. Needed 18, got 19. Last play of the quarter is a first down catch by Kentucky to Jimmy Robinson into Tennessee territory. Now the clock stops with four seconds left. I think Kentucky's just going to be content just to let it run out. Come over here, have the quarter change so you can get a chance to talk to the coach. Gain of 19, followed by a gain of 16. And that is the end of the third quarter, but it's still all Tennessee. Jared Lorenzen playing with one ankle, but a lot of guts. Travis Henry looking to break the Tennessee rushing record. 45-13, a little humor in the press box as we <laughs> come out of that commercial break. Fourth quarter action coming your way. It's really bad when your spotter says, I can't see. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what he just said to me. 
<laughs> First and ten. Here's Derek Homer on a big game. Willie Miles makes the stop, 19 yards. So a 19-yard gain, a 16-yard game, and, and now another 19-yard gain for this Wildcat offense. Yeah, Derek Homer, great explosion. Good bang off the ball. Just come off the ball, get that strength, put your shoulder down, pick up yardage, and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for in a late game like this, you're behind, you're looking for players that don't quit. Derek Homer wants to go out with some pride, as do the rest oh. of the Wildcats. Lorenzen pump fakes, goes to the end zone, has a man, touchdown Wildcats. It's Quentin McCord with his second touchdown. It covers 22 yards. And did you see that fake? That fake pump, as you called it, just he just held the corner right there, and then all of a sudden it was like that little down out, little hit step, and zip, he goes right down the sideline. Give him time to pass. He's deadly. Watch Lorenzen right here, that little fake pump right there. Now, just lay it up to him. Just a perfectly thrown ball. Cornerback bid on the uh, little pump fake. Result, seven points for Kentucky. Point after, up and good, 45-19. Quentin McCord with 120 yards receiving, a couple of touchdowns. He has four 100-yard games this year. DC football is being brought to you in part by Toyota. The value is real every day. 14-30 to play in the final home game of the 2000 campaign for the Tennessee Volunteers in the final game of the regular season for the Kentucky Wildcats. Most of the crowd has stayed around, but a timeout taken. Yeah, I think that Tennessee, Tennessee. saw. Yeah, they saw the uh, onside kick, kind of caught them off guard, and they called a timeout. Take a look at our woes, home improvement warehouse, third quarter stats. See, through three quarters, passing yards 331 for Casey Clawson today. Total yards amassed 453 by the Vols. And there are some folks uh, kind of doing their own <laughs> stats. Keeping an eye on one Travis Henry. It's the cheese meter <laughs> Hey, now look there. There's an autographed oh. Travis Henry hat. Now that's worth something. Wow. Now that's special. How about you? I got to say, what a nice gesture, by the way, for you. Give, you giving our producer, Rob Reichley, the helmet you wore in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Just something uh, I thought he'd like. I got nothing. That's why I brought it up. Well, yeah, and, and after today, yeah. all those comments about me today, you, might not, <laughs> yeah. you may get one of those, buddy. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> no, that was a nice thing that you did. I, yeah. I, I thought that was nice. Well, they want Cheese to get 10 right, more yards right. and become Tennessee's all-time leading rusher. Last series didn't do a whole lot. Well, Kentucky pretty much swarmed him and kept him from picking up any gains. And let's see what Kentucky does here. Well, there's a lot of time left, 14:30, so he'll get a lot of carries. Well played and recovered by Tennessee. Cedric Wilson comes up with it. Next Saturday at a new time, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, Tennessee heads west to Nashville to take on Vanderbilt. The interstate rivalry has been played since 1892. The Vols looking to better their position for a postseason bowl while the Commodores are hoping for their first win in the series since 1982. Yeah, that goes back quite a way. So plan on joining us next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern for the Jefferson Pilot Sports SEC Game of the Week. Of course, that one at Adelphia Coliseum. Can't wait to get over there. Haven't been in there yet. Been pretty good for the Titans, that's for sure. Pass batted in the air. Hung up in the air for quite some time. Grayson Smith batted it in the air and nearly made the interception. Boy, if Grayson Smith could have gotten to this football, lift to your screen, watch him go up. It's the end man. He's going to get that hand up right there. Now the ball goes up. He could have gotten that football. That would have been a thrill. Senior getting a chance to play in a big time game. Look at him shaking his head. Oh man, that was mine. Yeah. Defense line, I've been in that situation. It's kind of like, oh man, I was going to break to the left. I would have picked up a couple blockers. <laughs> Casey Clausen 
Hits Will Bartholomew. Steps out of bounds, but he did pick up the first down. Will Bartholomew becoming a big factor. They told us, the coaches, Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, told us, you know, the, the thing with him is that he couldn't, he can run well with the football early in the year, but he couldn't catch it. And it turns out that now he's beginning to catch the football. He had 10 receptions coming in. He's got three or four today and then picked up 13. And Charles, what's going on on the sidelines? Yeah, you're right about that, Dave. They said, you know, maybe you're not going to run with it much, but maybe you can catch it a few times. He's done that this year 14 times. He also caught Miss USA, Tennessee, 1997, his wife, Shelly. There it is. Travis Henry picks up the first down, gains 10 yards, plus some, a total of 14, and move over, James Stewart, and welcome Travis Henry. He's your new Tennessee all-time leading rusher. Listen to this crowd. Yeah, you can check out the cheese meter. Here comes the crowd. <laughs> Congratulations to Travis Henry. Well, two weeks ago, you would have thought it would take a long time to get there. And he didn't have much of a chance, but his two last ten games have just been outstanding. Here's the record run. He only needed ten. He got 14. He breaks a couple tackles at the line right in here. He breaks a little tackle. Comes back inside. Again, got to get to that marker. Now look at that yards after contact. Two people he just sheds off. Just a marvelous football player. Travis Cheese Henry. 139 yards today. On 18 carries, averaging 7.7 .7 yards per carry. And remember, Dave, you mentioned it earlier in this game. Last week, he goes for over 200 against Arkansas. Gets the game ball. What does he do? He gives it to his offensive line. Exactly. And you saw Will Bartholomew over there, the fullback, who sets a lot of it up. Look, he's got the ball under his arm. He's not going to let go of that ball. That one's going home with him. Travis Henry looking at the big screen, showing some of his great runs including that one from a year ago that we just saw the game we did. Absolutely. I'm saying that looked familiar. Hey! Travis Stevens checks into the game. Travis Henry now, by the way, 106 yards shy of 3,000 in his career. We might get that next week because Absolutely. we'll have Tennessee against Vanderbilt. Although Vandy's defense, uh, pretty good. Well, you can see, look at the jersey, rip jersey. That's the kind of football players I like. Doesn't get all fancy and everything. Did you see when he got it, just got up. Walked to the sideline, got congratulated by his coach. All his teammates coming over, didn't do any dancing and all that stuff. Just a real workhorse. And everybody coming over. Second down and nine. Clawson. Little fade route into the end zone. What an adjustment by Cedric oh. Wilson. Oh. Mercy. Talk about turning around, turning around. He turned both uh, both directions on that play. But a flag is down, I believe, at the 18-yard line. Hold everything. Yeah, the official picked that flag up. But look at that adjustment back to the inside. Defender just running by the football. Again, this is just a timing pass. What you do as a quarterback is you just throw to the end zone, right to the corner. You see how high their trajectory is. What an adjustment. Hey, one thing, he doesn't drop many balls. An 18-yard touchdown strike. Clawson with his fourth touchdown pass today. Balls away! Balls away! And that is up and good. 52 to 20. The scoreboard is lit up, but the big winner today, perhaps, won Travis Henry. 52-20 is our score. See 52 to 20. They put up 63 last week. I mean, these aren't exactly, you know, middle of the year, beginning of the year patsies. These are SEC teams are doing this too right now. Talk about jelly. 
That's what Philip Homer told us. He said our team is all coming together. Wow, are they coming together? Here's Shanklin at the four. Kendricks had some good returns today. You can add another one. He ran right into one of his own players and might have got some more yards. Jared Lorenzen has hung in there and hung in there as he limps back onto the field. He's had a pretty good day against this very good defense. He really has. He's found wide receivers on crossing patterns. He's, he's picked up first downs. He's just never looked in that one right there. That was the touchdown pass where he sprained his ankle. Would have knocked out most quarterbacks. But look at this. You talk about him shedding the blocks and then running for that first down on that injured ankle. A lot of guts, a lot of courage. And that fake pump for the touchdown. No quit in his body. Well, here are his freshman records that he has set. Three of those he has set today in terms of passing yards, total offense, and plays. Came in with the completion and attempts records. Those aren't SEC records. I mean, those, that's everybody that's ever played the game that was a freshman. That's pretty good. We had Today, he's 19 of 36 for 267. And a reason we have a delay right now is there's a personal foul against Kentucky on that kickoff that moves it back to the 20-yard line, so nullify the 32-yard return from Kendrick Shanklin. And it's first and 10 with 12.38 to go in the fourth. Nowhere to run. <laughs> That pocket just collapses around you. You run a draw play when you think you've got them rushing the passer and you get good blocks and you get that little seam. You see Jared Lorenzen just saying, ain't going to happen. For Hal Mummy, it's been a tough year this year. He really never recovered from that Louisville uh, loss early in the season. That just really took the heart out of him. They've had some tough losses this year. I think the Georgia game really kind of sent him over the edge. Lorenzen scrambles, gets hit as he throws. Had a man wide open at the middle of the field. It was Jimmy Robinson, 81, was wide open. Boy, he was. The ball got hit. It looked at the, the trajectory of the football as it came off his hand. Just kind of wobbled out there, so you know it got away from him. Again, scrambling under pressure. This is defensive line spun because they know what's going to happen. He's just going to pass. Now watch this. Right at the tail end right there, the ball just kind of came off his hand. He knows he's going to get hit. He goes down. You can see right there, you saw 81 was standing right there. He's wide open. Stephen Morris already has one interception today, nearly had two. Third and 12. There's a blitz. What a pass from Lorenzen. Oh. To Quentin McCord, who continues on with one of his best games in his final game in a Kentucky uniform. A gain of 20 for Quentin McCord. And McCord. He now has five catches for 140 yards today. Well, if you're looking at Kentucky, you've got to look at the positives. They got a young offensive line. Antonio Hall's just a real true freshman. Got a couple juniors in, a couple sophomores. You got a freshman quarterback. You got a lot of positives. That's it. Derek Homer on the carry. Jabari Greer brings him down. Mississippi State up by 10 in the second. Mississippi State has to continue to win if they want to go to the SEC championship game out of the Western Division. Michigan, Ohio State in a good one. Big 10 showdown between two rivals and Maryland's. Oh, yeah, coming back. Oh, they did. No, that game's over. Excuse me. They did come back, scored 22 points. That was way out of control. Georgia Tech got off to a big lead early, held on 35 22. Now the Jackets look forward to their date with Georgia. Oh, nearly picked oh. off by Tad Golden. Talk about going right through your hands. Tad Golden said, where did that thing go? It's right there. Looked as if it went right between his hands. Again, look right to your screen right there. Number 13. Oh, it did. You know, well, that's one of the reasons this team only had seven interceptions this year. This, is, this could have been number eight. They had a bunch of them last week. As a matter of fact, you told John Ch Chavis, the defensive coordinator, when we met with him yesterday, he goes, I only have one complaint about your defense. It's your defensive backs dropping everything and hits them. That's, I know. They, they could have had three or four interceptions last week. Did not. Nice catch by Homer. He's still on his feet to the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Great play by 
Derek Homer, he picks up 20 on the play. Kentucky can chew up some offense now, some yardage here. They sure can. Derek Homer, he's going to drift out of the back. There he is right there, 42. And watch Tad Golden come up here, 13, misses the tackle. Got to square up. You got to drop that tail. Look at the yardage that Derek Homer picks up afterwards. Wasn't he Mr. Kentucky football at one time? And once again, it bears repeating that this guy's playing with no cartilage in one of his knees. Homer gets hit hard, brought down, but he gains a couple on the play. He is uh, he's a guy that's basically, as you've described it to me, a bone-on-bone -bone type of situation. And uh, Coach Mummy said that Quentin's just kind of run out of gas toward the end of the year in terms of, of pain and agony, but he's out here today having a career afternoon. Yeah, sure is. You got to... Oh, you wouldn't think that, would you? With the score being what it is. First downs, 23 oh. for both teams. Hey, last year, Kentucky put up some numbers. They th threw up 478 yards of offense last year against Tennessee. Dusty Bonner had 361 of that through the air. Lorenzen's closing in on that number as well, but a flag is down at the 30. You know what I think that is? I think that's Quentin McCord holding out there. Oh, come 25. on, Quentin. We're out there I, talking highly of him. I know. I think it's going to be, yep. Quentin McCord is out there. He's a wide receiver, and you really love to get those blocks. And he's, a, he's an anxious guy, and I think he just tied up with the corner and held him. I was watching him all the way on that play after you just mentioned him. See him? He's right there. He's going to drift out here. Now, see what he does right at in there. Oh. oh, that's not much of a hold. <laughs> that may not be it. We'll cut him some slack and say it came from all some right. other part of the field. Mom, Dad, that wasn't it. <laughs> Quentin's a big play guy. He came in here with five plays over 45 yards. Had another one here today. Second and 13 now. Pass is dropped by Quentin McCord. Come on, Quentin. <laughs> Can't have that. Eric Westmoreland on the coverage. Well, they, they used to call that footsteps. And that's when you hear the footsteps of Eric Westmoreland running down your throat. For 42, one of the seniors. Just a real leader on this team. Couple sacks today. Boy, talk about giving up yards. Look at that. And this doesn't this doesn't bode well for your stats in the uh, SEC. You talk about yards given up. And they were number one in total defense. Thirteenth in the country. Pass is caught by Quentin McCourt. First down, Teddy Gaines on the coverage. You know, when, when I watch Lorenzen drop back and look, he looks at those wide receivers. When he's got to throw that 20-yarder, there's McCourt. It's just a straight down. He's going to hook to the inside. When he's got to throw that 20-yarder, I mean, that ball just comes there. There's no float to the ball. In other words, it's just coming straight at him. Look at this straight. Not up, not down, and just here. You can catch it, fans. Boom. That's what it's like. But, uh, boy, he's got a great arm. Just a rocket. Oh, he now has 328 yards passing on 23 of 43. Under pressure, Lorenzen sacked again. Fourth time today, John Henderson gets the sack. And for Big John, that's his 10th sack of the year. That leads the Southeastern Conference. Well, you gotta have that bull rush in the middle, and that's what John Henderson does. When those outside backers force you up, you gotta have those linemen coming up in there. It was number 98, just ripping them down. Dave, that is now six straight games with at least four sacks. You know, you had mentioned earlier about John Henderson. I thought he, doesn't he have two years possible? Could he come? I, I believe that's true, Dave. I think he can come back because he came here. He graduates on time. I believe he has an extra year, so not only a... Not only yeah, he came here as a partial qualifier. Exactly, right. Sack number five. It's Eric Westmoreland, who is having a career oh, wow. day. It's his third sack of the afternoon. It's a delayed blitz by number 42. In other words, what you do is you don't come right away. 
Number 42 is just, he just kind of holds off. There he is, number 42. Now watch, he just kind of delays a second. Now he comes. And again, just delay a little bit. Let those linemen take him inside and look at 42. Now, you're not just going to push him off. Because when he tackles, he takes you down. That's 45 sacks for this defense. Two off the school record. Wow. Renzen gets hit as he lets it go. And he goes tumbling to the ground in a heap. Let's hope he's all right. Guess who stepped over him? Number 98, John Henderson. Lloyd and Henderson putting the heat on. <laughs> the redshirt freshman quarterback. I can tell you, this is fun for a defensive lineman. You know it's past time. You're playing against a team like this. You love sacks. Everybody talks about sacks. What do you do? Just put that tail up, put the weight on your hands, and go get them. Kentucky calls a timeout. 52-20. Back up their word from Advance Auto Parts. Somewhere in there is a football fan, and you better be a football fan to be out here right now. <laughs> Temperature about 34 degrees. It's 33, I'm told. That's right, 33. Oh, wait a minute, went 34. <laughs> Lorenz in on fourth down to the end zone. Picked off. Flag is down right where Lorenzen let it go. Now, did they rough the quarterback? Get a Holding mask? against Kentucky. Yep. Exactly. And it was fourth down, so you might as well launch it to the end zone. Yeah, and Stephen Marsh picks up the interception. That's his second today. Actually, this is a good play for Kentucky. It's a good punt. It's like punting it into the end zone. Yeah, throw it up high. You knock it down, you get it out at about 35. You catch it, you get it out to the 20. Rashad Baker with the second interception, or excuse me, Stephen Marsh with the second interception. He's replacing Rashad Baker, who left the game with an injury. Uh, this is just grinded out time. Yep, oops, wait a minute. Get up, guys, get up, guys. That ball sails out of bounds. A.J. Suggs, by the way, has made his entrance onto this football field. There's A.J.'s numbers, 58% completion rate, 785 yards. He's got five touchdowns, three interceptions. Against LSU, he had a, an unbelievable game, 37 of 59, 319 yards, three TDs, no interceptions, but it ended up being a loss in overtime to the Tigers. So much for my call. I thought it'd be grinded out time. Now it is. A huge run for Travis Stevens. He may go the distance. Untouched for the 80-yard touchdown. And Casey Clausen's folks like what they see from the Vols. Dave, once he breaks through the line of scrimmage, right? there now there's nobody in front of them I'm not talking about corners you're gonna see blue shirts and blue uh, white shirts with blue pants running behind them because everybody on Kentucky was up they were all up in the box and once he broke into the secondary he was gone Travis Stevens with his sixth rushing touchdown this year the junior out of Clarksville Tennessee Tennessee has now built their lead to 59 to 20. 6.48 to go in the ball game. They have scored at least 56 points in the last four meetings. Make that five meetings after today. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> you're looking, you want offense? You want your team to gel at the end of the season? 59 this week, 63 last week. <laughs> All right, I want to. Yeah, no, wait, that's not a push job. By the All end the of the day. Now that guy there, hey, that's not bad right there. I mean, I'll take that. But look at this guy here. Uh, 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 uh. Nah, I ain't counting that. They, they will have done about 300 push ups by the time this day is over. <laughs> look, they got, uh, look, he's quitting. Look, I can see it right there. There's no distance. More than that. I look can't figure it. this out, but. <laughs> 
Well, fans, jpsports.com has the coverage you want. No one knows the SEC like JP Sports, and we bring you the information online. Tune in each week for previews. Our Payne Weber, excuse me, I'm reading the wrong card. That's Cole Kubelik <laughs> of Auburn, our Payne Weber, SEC member of the SEC Good Works team. As he visits many of the local hospitals in the Auburn area, reads to children, speaks at schools throughout the Auburn area. Congratulations to Cole Kubelik, our Payne Weber, SEC Good Works team. Thank you, Payne Weber. Boy. Pretty good average, huh? Pretty good average right there. Last two games, 61 points a game. We've got them next week. Anthony Kelly run out of bounds. Some pushing and shoving going on over there on that Kentucky sideline. Well, there's a lot of pride at stake right here. We talked about it being neighboring states. You see how Mummy out there pulling his players back. And nope. Guys, we don't do that. Well, let me tell you, he's just as fierce a competitor as anybody out there. Speaking of next week, Tennessee and Vandy will go at it. 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central from Adelphia Coliseum. It's a special time. Be sure to join us then at 3.30. Greg Zolman will lead the Vanderbilt attack against Travis Henry and Casey Clawson. There's Casey Clausen back yeah. to us. Got his coat on. And uh, just to give you an update on him, a career day for Casey. He ties his career high in completions with 19. He was 19 of 24 for a career high 362 yards, four touchdowns, and just one interception. So when you look at the uh, numbers to date, 14 touchdowns, four interse interceptions. But most importantly, Dave, as a starter, 5-0. Fantastic. And I'll tell you this, if there was ever a doubt about him playing in cold weather, forget that. Loose Bring football. Down, Who's down, got it? Down. Chad Scott will come up with it. Chad Scott will have some great games in the SEC before his career oh, is all said and done. The true freshman. Well, this is just this is just taking off before you get the ball. See how his head kind of came up to look. Look how quickly those orange shirts are there. A lot of depth on this Tennessee team. That's why they were able to recover what they have 12 or 13 players leave last year after last season. Flags are thrown. Jared Lorenzo gets a little laugh out of that. He walked back, looked at the official. 12 men on the field. Substitution infraction against the offense. 12 players breaking from the huddle. You can see the frustration on Hal Mummy's face. You can't break that huddle with 12 players. Eight penalties now for 65 <laughs> yards against Kentucky today. Now, Mummy, just as soon, maybe put a couple touchdowns on the board before it's over and get out of here and uh, reevaluate and worry about next year. He's got plenty of talent coming back in 2001. And especially on offense. He's got some firepower. Kentucky reads that extremely well. And, Charles, this, uh, this Kentucky team has some, some promise. Yes, it does. You guys have been discussing that, and it starts with Jared Lorenz in the quarterback. He's shown a lot of grit down the stretch, even though he's been hurt, and they haven't played well all, all game. Chad Scott also on offense. Derek Smith, he has some building blocks. And on the defensive side, the two defensive tackles, Jeremy Cottle and Dwayne Robertson. Dwayne Robertson with 13 and a half tackles for losses. And I'll have a new defensive coordinator who will help, who'll help grow that talent. Now, Mummy tells us, could be his short as next week before he announces his defensive coordinator. Lorenzen set. Get up, get up, get up. I couldn't believe that he came up with this football, but Lorenzen, the snap was way off center. Not even close to the quarterback. That is the sixth sack of the game for Tennessee. They are one shy of the school record. Lynn Magruder gets his first sack of the day. Watch this. He just carries the defensive player on his back. He's still got him up there. Look at that. He's still got him up. Oh, wow. Uh, the wheels fell off the wagon. It's a tough one. 
surely Kentucky will not fake this. Come on. Eric Parker back to return the punt. A wobbly kick. Parker calls for the fair catch at the 44-yard line, and that is where Tennessee will take over. 31-yard kick. And we have four minutes and ten seconds remaining in this ball game. And speaking of the cheerleaders, we saw moments ago, Earl Anderson, our astute statistician, tells me that uh, they have done 299 push-ups today. Oh, wait a minute. Now, how did he come up? <laughs> he knows, because Earl knows. <laughs> Well, gosh, we got two Andersons in here. One can do math, and the other one's blind. <laughs> <laughs> and the tough one is, is that our, our spotter is the one that's blind. <laughs> Kim Anderson, longtime spotter for JP. Travis Stevens loses a couple of yards. You know, last week I was here, and... Uh, there were not many fans here today. Oh, look. Hey, yeah, oh. <laughs> look, at me. look at you. Did you play in the NFL, That's defensive right. lineman? I played out here with T-shirts. See, when you just wore a T-shirt. If it was under 50, I wouldn't go outside. <laughs> Listen to you. <laughs> you got gloves on. Look I know. Him. Look at him over there, fans. He's got gloves on. I mean, he's got a little cummerbund. He's got a little, <laughs> you know, Real Raiders. Oh. The weather doesn't affect us. All game, you haven't had a coat on. Amazing. <laughs> Josh Plemons, the senior, about fourth on the depth chart, getting some action as he finishes his career for the Tennessee Volunteers. 6'3", 200-pound senior out of Kingston, Tennessee. Philip Fulmer trying to get all of his seniors, the 19 seniors that are playing in their final home game in Neyland Stadium, a chance to remember something for a lifetime. These seniors part of the national hey, championship run a couple of years back. And, uh, you know, we look at, you know, we asked Philip Homer about this team and how he felt about, as from a coaching standpoint, about the, the way this team has grown game by game. And he says it's one of his, along with the 94 team, perhaps one of the, one of the most inspiring seasons he's had as a head coach. Well, it's really rewarding, and coaches take different things. I mean, you win a national championship, he was coach of the year. Those are wonderful moments. But when you see a team, when you lose the number of players like he lost last year, and then you see this team all come together, start to gel, you're two and three at one time in the season, and now you've rattled off, what, five victories in a row. Yeah. I mean, you put together and you've seen it, and I mean, we're not talking about easy victories. We're talking about 59 points this week, 63 points. Everything gelling's got to be very, very rewarding for Philip Fulmer. And he is coaching his 100th game today as the Tennessee head coach, and he'll go to 83 and 17. Nice punt returned by Shanklin. He's going to just fall down right there. One of the stars today has been this man, Travis Henry, Tennessee's all time leading rusher. Breaking tackle after tackle, 5'11", 220, loaded with power. Oh, and the interesting thing is we talked about him playing in the shadows of Jamal Lewis. Before this year, he only had eight starts. That's eight starts in two years, but uh, just a marvelous football player. Just That was the run, the run right there that he set the record on, took the game ball to the sideline. Congratulations to Travis. Derek Homer with the carry. And Mark Perry, the senior, playing in his final game. His first and only action as a member of the Kentucky Wildcat varsity team. He played some J uh, JV football at Kentucky, but this will be his swan song. I'd like to see him throw a pass. How about that? I'd like Why to see not? Him. Hey, yeah, get him Why out not? there. Come on, you run the offense. You've been there and practice a lot. Give him a chance, coach. Let him throw that football. What a thrill it will be for him to complete one. Here you go. He does. All right. Derek Smith, the tight end. Don't know how much he got on that play. It, hey, all it doesn't do. matter. It's it a doesn't completion. Matter. It's a completion. That's right. Under a minute to go. 
Yep, get him a little bit of time, give him a little playing time. That's fun. But uh, we're going to see a lot of Jared Lorenzen in the future. Lorenzen. Boy, you think of, you think of the uh, has, hmm. has eight of 11 games this year. He went over 300 yards, including the massive performance against Georgia when he went for 528. Perry steps in there, got hammered. Looking for Derek Abney. Perry's going, that clock can't tick fast enough after that hit. <laughs> yeah. Well, he got a little bit of time. And, you know, we talked about positives for Kentucky. We talked about their offensive line being real young. They come up with a couple of good wide outs, but their help, they need their help on defense. They've got two good defensive tackles in the middle. They're both freshmen. They'll get uh, a couple of injured players back next year, a new coordinator, and just kind of a new spark. For Al Mummy, it's not been anything like what he thought it would be. This might be the last play with 25 seconds. Play clock at zero. They're going to blow the whistle. Oh, let it run. <laughs> Delay of the game against the offense. Violation of the 25 second clock. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Well, this 96th meeting between these two rivals, it dates back to 1893, will go to Tennessee, who will now win their 16th straight in this series. But Kentucky won the very first game in 1893 here in Knoxville, 56-zip. I don't remember that one. <laughs> Mark Perry overthrew his receiver. Pass was nearly picked off by Tad Golden. Actually hit him in the ankle. And that was fourth down, so Tennessee will have it and more than likely just take a knee. Philip Fulmer. 83% winning percentage. 83% of the time they win a football game with him on the sidelines. Yep, I think I'd keep him for a long time. Yeah. If you're winning at 83%, he stays. He stays. Best in the country among active coaches. Boy, just a lot of fun. I mean, you know, I love to go in his office. We sit down there. He's got uh, it's just stuff everywhere. And uh, it's just like a little yeah. fireside chat when you come and talk to him. Just a, just a great guy to talk to. A lot of fun. Nearly a touchdown for the Vols as the clock runs and runs and runs. Philip Fulmer, 83 and 17. Well, that'll do it. Tennessee goes to seven and three. They won five in a row. Kentucky finishes their season two and nine. Travis Henry, a big day, back in a moment.